Hey, welcome to Creative Block. We're your host, V. And Megan. We interview people in creative industries about their life, work, and hobbies while we doodle jam. We ask people on Twitter and Instagram. Remember to follow us on Instagram. We're leaving Twitter. Twitter. Um, if they had specific topics they wanted us to discuss, as well as some drawing prompts. Today with us, we have Howie Perry. Hi. Hello. Hello, Hi, everyone. Howie. Hi, Howie. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thank you so it. much for coming on the show. This is super exciting. Thanks um, for having you, me. You've worked on a ton of awesome shows, and you've been supervising directing, which is super, super cool. Um, yes. Before we get into all the nitty gritty of what it means to be supervisor, supervising director, I like to start the interview by asking our guest, uh, did you go to art school? <laughs> <laughs> Give us the deets, Howie. Yeah. I did. I did. I have a, uh, I guess, a very maybe unusual kind of um, mm -hmm. upbringing of animation because I always wanted to draw. I always, it was the only thing I could do was draw was doodle in my room um and i'll fast forward all the way to high school i think in my senior year this animation school actually opened up in my hometown i'm from long island uh new york by the way and there's no animation anything there like you draw cartoons like you're a weirdo um <laughs> <laughs> like you know so um yeah my, my high school teacher came to me one day with like a newspaper at back when they used to run ads in the newspapers or whatever Mm -hmm. that, that was all we could read um and uh yeah she was like this school opened up like right down the street for it's called the center for character animation i think that's what it was called and i went down there with my dad checked it out and yeah it was this um uh this guy named brian brian mitchell who lived in la and started an animation school in new york he, had, mm -hmm. he moved back home back east and then yeah started this school and up until then, I was just drawing, uh, you know, as any kid in high school would draw. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about cartoon construction. I wanted to be an animator. I wanted to work at Disney because this is also like the uh, mid 90s mm -hmm. um, when Disney was having like their resurgence of, you know, you know, Lion King, Aladdin, all that stuff. So mm -hmm. I wanted to be a Disney animator. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, Brian taught me like how to actually draw for real. <laughs> um he taught me how to use construction. He showed me the Preston Blair book. I was like, what? Like, what is all this? Um, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, so like, I go, because I was like probably 16 or 17 at the time, I was about to go off to college. So Brian taught me all this amazing stuff, how to actually animate. And then I went, my parents, they didn't want me staying home. They were like, you need to go, just get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> get out. Like, I wanted to go, maybe go to school in New York City. Like, there was SVA, but, like, mm. I, I, Cal Arts was too far. Um, mm. So I went to the Art Institute of Philadelphia, which was about two and a half hours away from mm. um, from my house, from, from my parents' house. Um, it was, like, a two-year program, and they're no longer in business. So oh, let's no. just say that <laughs> it was... It was, uh, uh, I made some great friends that I'm still friends with today, um, but the school itself, yeah, it was not great. Um, oh, no. I really didn't learn that much, uh, thank, but thanks to what happened to me in high school, going to that animation school that was like right down the street from my parents' house, um, I was able to use that information and I'm still using it today. Like it was, cause I, w I had like an, like kind of a, you know, an up on everybody else on the school because I actually knew how to like draw oh, um, wow. like with construction and all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, that was kind of like my animation upbringing. So. Dang. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, wait, so would you say you learn more at that high school? Yes, uh, totally. Little... Yes. Yeah. And I didn't really go <laughs> like, that's a, the other thing too, is like, because I was like, I think like, I think I was a high school senior or mm -hmm. or before what's the one where you're before a senior <laughs> was that junior junior yeah it's junior it's been remember a while since i've been in high school remember high school <laughs> yeah, yeah um <laughs> junior i don't know um yeah I, was, I, I just i just remember being like on my way out of high school right and i was like oh, i wish this school opened up earlier you know um but yeah i totally learned more there i think i maybe took like one class or two and then i would just i would hang out there sometimes you know because it was like it was even like walking distance from my house like that's how close it was 
Wow, um, that's a great and, resource. And Brian himself, like he had a little studio set up there where he would do like freelance boards and stuff and freelance animation for studios back in LA. So I would mm-hmm. see what he was doing, you know, and he would show me and I'd be like, oh my God, like what? Like it was so like, it was amazingly cool and daunting. I and mean, this is back when I'm going to, you know, make myself sound old. I'm not that old people. Um, but the, <laughs> the, internet, the internet was in its early days. So there was no like YouTube. There was, you know, yeah. it was really hard to find information. Um, mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Like you had to really search for it. And just to have someone speak to you about like, you couldn't just go on YouTube and find like animator that works at Disney. And then like find all these animators who work at Disney telling you like what it's like there. Like that didn't exist when I was in high school. So for mm-hmm. Brian to tell me like all these cool like stories when he worked in the industry, um, he had an interesting um, career too, where he was an animator at Don Bluth. He was an animator like on like um, what's it, Disney like TV special. Like it was like Disney like video specials, like direct to video specials, I think. He might have done mm. feature stuff too. I don't know. I can't remember. But uh, anyway, yeah, he taught me a ton. He also, it wasn't just feature stuff too. He also taught me like how to, um, like also, well, he taught me how to uh, look at animation, like what it mm-hmm. means and everything. And then taught me limited animation. Like he had like a projector in his uh, little school there. Um, and it would show like Yogi Bear cartoons, like old Hanna Bear cartoons and like break it down. He showed me like Toot Whistle, Punk and Boom. Um, and that was just like, mind- like I never seen like this stuff before. Like, it was <laughs> mind blowing, you know. Um, mm. So yeah, I definitely learned more at that place than I ever. Because when I went to the art institute, it was a school that let everybody in. If you had a checkbook, <laughs> and, oh, and, no. that, and that check cleared, they let you in. And that's I kind think... of why they're out of business now, is because they let anyone in, and they went to high schools, and they would just like. Oh. recruit i don't know whether like they would just break like just take kids like from high school like, kids that had no business being in art school and they kind of suckered oh, them no. they would get their get their bank information and start charging them and then they got sued for it years later and like a, i think a giant class action lawsuit and really interesting yes i want to say maybe like 10 years 10 15 10 years ago 10 15 years ago yeah they got this big lawsuit and they yeah they went Dang. under um you're one of the survivors. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, but like I said, I make good friends there. Um, I kind of learned like what not to do. Um, again, this is a school in Philly, so like you're not gonna get like um, the, the most amazing. T- like we, a lot of my teachers were experimental animators mm, from like yeah. either New York. Um, and there yeah. were there were some good ones. Like don't get me wrong. Like there were some ones where I was like, oh, like I'm gonna follow you. You know. Um, yeah. But the stuff I learned in yeah in high school at that little animation school was like yeah stuff that i still use today um so hell yeah it's funny that you bring up the limited animation too because that was something like because you were my boss howie and you were one of my best bosses Uh, that's something that we always talk about with storyboarding too is that you have such an efficient way of boarding and handling Mm -hmm. like acting and it's just it from an outsider you're like wow this guy's so quick he can just draw so quick but it's also like knowing how things are going to look in the end result and how to like communicate things so effectively and so quickly. And like, that's why Hannah Barbera and all that stuff works so well. Cause like, it's so limited, but the point is always like, you always get what they're trying to, you know, put across and it's great. I love yeah. That stuff. I had like a, like a crisis mm-hmm. when I was in high school when I was like, I want to be a feature animator. And then I learned or not learn, but I would discover it through Brian, like all this um, limited animation, like Hannah Barbera mm-hmm. with like these amazing designs um, by like Ed Benedict or whoever. Um, and I was like, wait, so you don't need like 50 million drawings to like get your point across <laughs> in a scene? Mm-hmm. Like, so like, great. <laughs> like, all you need is like some kick ass design and a really like appealing pose. Mm-hmm. Um, to Strong like. Strong ABs. Yeah, the, just AB. Yeah, you know me with my ABs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyone that's worked with me, I don't know even, even know where I picked it up from, but yeah, if you ever see my boards, they're always covered in AB poses. Um, but yeah, it's like you don't need to do all that fancy feature animation. I love it, mm-hmm. it's beautiful. Um, but you can also just get those points across with like, yeah, two drawings. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, it's interesting too. If you have great that, designs. Like, Mm-hmm. Yeah, that you, you bring it up because I do feel like, I mean, it's something, I think we were talking about it with Lauren Faust on the podcast, and I've been talking about it with other people, like, not on the podcast, but it's kind of a, an art form that's kind of, like, lost a little bit. There's not that many storyboard artists right now who know how, who know how to storyboard 
economically efficiently mm -hmm. yeah um so it's really cool that like you were able to like learn it and so early on too you're learning in high school that's super cool yeah i mean and that was all animation like i had no like i knew storyboards existed but i didn't really have any like i just wanted to be an animator <laughs> um it wasn't until later until i moved out to la that i got into storyboards and still like my first job here was um being a flash animator oh that's um, right yeah so when you're a flash animator and all you want to do is draw <laughs> yeah it's, it's a very uh, just not, nothing but um your brain is just on fire the whole time it's like i, ha I had literally like <laughs> because like especially back then this is like going what was like 2002 to 2003 mm -hmm. um like we we had Wacom tablets, you know, and it was always you know it's awkward drawing with those things. And sorry to anyone that's actually still using those things, but uh, <laughs> Cintiqs, Cintiqs makes it so much easier. But like, <laughs> you know, like like everyone's just like, including me, like you're just pulling points, you know, when you're animating mm -hmm. in Flash and you're transforming, rotating, whatever, and it's all fine, it's all good, whatever. But like for me, it's like I need to draw, <laughs> yeah. so it was really really difficult. So I had like this giant stack of Xerox paper <laughs> next to my desk. Uh, and I was just doodling like all day long and also working on my scenes, but doodling, doodling, doodling <laughs> on paper, paper, and then working on my scenes and then going, you know, back and forth. And like my supervisor was like, is he working? <laughs> like, oh, no. It looks like he's just <laughs> doodling all day long. And, you know, but I got my work done. But um, yeah. So what was I talking about again? I forget. I'm, I'm going off on tangents. Um, um, that was kind of cool. Uh, that you're... Limit animation. Yes. Yeah. Limit animation. Yeah. So working in Flash, it makes you very economical because if you're animating that stuff, you don't want a character like moving around three dimensionally or anything, you know? So it's like, yeah. and to me, it's like just keeping it simple is just always the best way to go about it. Um, yep. Yeah. I agree. So yeah. Especially my, uh, my... for cartoony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you don't want to like, and I think a lot of people now also, they get excited by, like, animating because 2D animation kind of doesn't really exist as much as a job. So we all, a lot of anim people that want to be animators jump to boards, and then it's like, oh, I'm going to add all these overthrows and all this extra stuff to the mm -hmm. boards to really showcase my skills, which is fine, whatever. But also, like, if you're doing cartoony stuff especially, it kind of loses its impact. The more stuff you put in, it's not... It loses that fun, like that bounce, that like that squash and stretch goes away when you mm. add too much crap in. Yes, um, I'm always in. Yeah, you've heard me before, Megan. Uh -huh. Like keep it flat, <laughs> keep it simple. Yeah, like there's a time and place for everything. Um, when it comes to boarding, you know, just uh, mm -hmm. for TV especially, like we don't have the budgets, we don't have the money to do fancy camera moves all the time, and <laughs> so <laughs> and, and for comedy, like it just reads better when it's flat. Um, yeah. and then when it's a crazy action scene, car chase, whatever, yeah, then you can add some dynamic angles. It's all about the cheats. That's what it's Hell all yeah. about, cheating. <laughs> That's another thing I love yeah. that you were, like, super, like, for on Minimalist, which was great, was that you were always, like, just do, like, cheat it, just make it work. You can just cheat things. As long mm -hmm. as it, like, works, then it's working, which is great, because people get really caught up in, like, the technical aspect of, like, well, how did the character walk from this area to this area? I remember you'd always be saying, like, you had to cut out that shoe leather. Like, nobody wants to yeah. watch somebody walking across the screen. It's boring. <laughs> yeah, that was something I learned. Um, man, I'll, I'll, I'm skipping all around here, but I'm sure you guys don't mind. Um, yeah, <laughs> go for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, about, about the cheating. Um, <laughs> that was all fun until I got caught when I worked on a CG show. <laughs> and then they were oh, like, no. what are you doing? Yeah, yeah I worked with... Um, I worked on Fanboy and Chum Chum the first season, which was, mm. I think, the first, yeah, the first and maybe, yeah, the, yes, it was the first CG show I worked on, um, and this is around, what, 2009, so I was still, like, fair, 2010, I was still fairly new um, to boarding, and, uh, yeah, I was just doing my, they were like, yeah, just board the way you board, I was like, okay, cool, and it was full of, like, zip pans and cheats and, you know, like, characters, <laughs> just all of a sudden, they're in one corner of the room, then they're in the other corner, and I remember doing, like, this um, episode with uh, a haunted house, and the show creator, Eric, Eric Robles, called me in his office, and he's like, okay, he had, like, this little mock-up, like, he made, I, I hope I'm remembering this correctly and not I didn't dream this. It's like, it's like, like he had like this mock up, like he made like a like out of like a, like phone core or whatever, like a mock up of the um of this haunted house. And he's like, okay, so let me get this straight. 
this scene the characters are here and then in this scene their characters are here and this scene the characters are here how do they do that and i'm like oh <laughs> like Uh-oh. like i'm looking at like this is my the first time i'm realizing like oh it's all he's like yeah we're gonna have to build all these new sets and whatever in cg because 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 you're cheating it it's all these <laughs> new like you know these new areas of the house that don't exist um so i was like okay oh, no. <laughs> yeah i got busted but um Bust. but, but, but i show like middle most though like yeah we, we cheated all the time because it adds to the cartooniness and the zaniness of it too and yeah and the shoe leather part um it was when i, I worked on um mr peabody and sherman show mm-hmm. at dreamworks and this is mm-hmm. like i'm going back what six years ago or so maybe longer i don't know my memory shot um and that was a show where i was doing uh boards and um and writing we got outlines so it was it was, mm-hmm. it was a board driven show and oh my god it was like the one of the most amazing crews i've ever worked with um and the writers, the showrunner, Dave Smith, everyone was like, they would, oh, they were like, just hammer it in, like, get rid of the shoe leather, get rid of the shoe leather. Because I think everyone was just very long on their episodes, too. Mm-hmm. And it really made me even more economical, like, and more like just cutting out the crap, you know, and just being like, rapid fire, like, <laughs> joke, mm-hmm. joke. We had like this, I can go on and on about that show, but we also had like, just, uh, just, again, an insane crew with just amazing pitches the pitches had like people on the floor like dying in laughter <laughs> and yeah it was like and people were doing the the other board artists doing it was just rapid fire jokes over and over again if you were pitching and there was like a three seconds of silence at least to me at least i'd be like oh no i bombed <laughs> like, oh my like, god yeah, it, was like, it was so hardcore everyone was so funny and amazing that yeah so it, a lot of pressure it, it was too. so much pressure it was the most fun ever because I, I i don't i thrive off of that kind of pressure mm-hmm. like i need <laughs> i need that otherwise i, I get very lazy uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no it's awesome working with that crew and having like that camaraderie you know like yeah yeah i love that i i do agree with that idea a little bit that like i don't know uh it's nice to be challenged on a show i feel like okay every i don't know for you guys but every time i am on a show and i'm like i know exactly what needs to be done on the show and what like how to do these shot and these sequences of shot and it's all stuff that i've done before i it's tough because it's like Mm -hmm. well i i'm not like growing right gets boring (laughs) <laughs> it's also like the magic of animations that we can do all these fun things so it's like <laughs> it's tough that like it's like oh i don't want to be bored in a sitcom or something because it's like it's animation let's do stuff that our media you know can do that other places can't yes and those are the shows that i always want to work on i don't want to work on i don't want to work yep. on like boring shows <laughs> i've i've worked on preschool shows it has it hasn't gone well <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, but that goes to show kind of like what a style is i like to kind of yep. always talk about that on interviews to kind of like the mystify what it means like the tone of a show or like the style of a show and it's not just the drawing style but it's also like what kind of a comedy as a board artist do you like gravitate towards or like how do you stage and i think what you're talking about is a very specific um style that like a very specific kind of cartoony because i feel like there's different types of cartoony styles mm-hmm. um i don't know if you guys agree there's like the, a little bit more like the 20s kind of 30s yeah. rubber hose that's like different yeah. from like the kind of like upa yeah and people will come up to you and be like i know cartoony and then you see like no that's not that's not cartoony yeah i don't know like <laughs> yeah everyone had definitely has different different interpretations of what cartoony is um mm-hmm. it's true i to me it's always about the story like you know for boarding at least it's like it's always about pushing the characters like on middlemost like we were always pushing the acting like we just wanted mm-hmm. to push those characters we wanted them to look funny no matter what they were doing um mm-hmm uh and then yeah staging for cartooniness um yeah again just keeping it flat and simple is the way to do it you know um i think nowadays there's a lot of uh uh, people watch a lot of for see a lot of things on youtube there's a lot of cool things out there on the internet and Mm -hmm. like there's a lot of bad um 
how do I say this nicely? <laughs> People are making <laughs> a lot of bad choices because there's just so much information out there and I don't blame them. Like my mm-hmm. mind would be like, you know, spinning around too. Um, but yeah, if you're working on a show like Middlemost or on like a comedy TV show, like everything has to kind of work together. And if you have a board or if you're boarding like really dynamically, which is fine for like features or whatever, but mm-hmm. if you're doing like silly Middlemost comedy, um, it's also very character driven. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not going to work. Um, yeah. yeah. It's funny because that was something that on the Loud House, I remember they had a hard time staffing on that show because, um, and I looked at some of the tests as well, and I was like, oh, interesting. Like, there's <clears throat> there were some tests that were, like, extremely cinematic, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's not the show. <laughs> it's like C- a, yeah, Cinematic you know. is a term that has been yelled at me <laughs> uh-huh. um, so many times, so many times. I hate uh, that term. Yeah. Nobody knows what it means. I, Everyone has different definitions. I was definitions. just going to say that. I think we've had this yep. talk before, Megan. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. I'm like, you don't know what cinematic is. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's also because, like, people, I think, they think cinematic and they start, like, putting tone in their boards. Like, now <laughs> this is cinematic. I'm like, but that's not really cinematic it's do you mean like the coloring about... in of boards like the yeah it's like yeah, now it's cinematic yeah. we got some grayscale in there it's like no it's kind of <laughs> cinematic boards are more about like thinking about like the camera and how can the camera be like moved around like depth and not just you know yeah. like the typical kind of poses but like how are these characters working in this environment because you can still have really simple cinematic boards yeah yeah and i think the yeah. the, the feature boards that are simple is the, the ones that people still gravitate towards you yes know? Um, i agree yep. very much yeah. be- because it's like then it's like clear and like mm-hmm. at the end of the day you want your audience to know what's going on on the screen mm-hmm. i think that's the hardest thing about storyboarding is like and actually, Jeremy Polgar was great on Thundercats. He was my director because he, he's an animator first, kind of like you, how you're an animator first. So it's kind of like I'm a really want to be animator first. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I tried. I tried. I tried. I got, luckily, I got into boards. Like, I was just like, you know what? I like boards better than animation. So, yeah. but, but I, I think having the animation background at least for a board, like, kind of, it has my, like, I'm wired to kind of animate when I go to board. But I still keep it simple. That's the thing. It's like restraint, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, And also just kind of like that, like the rhythm of mm -hmm. it, where it's just like one information at a time. Not like, right? I feel like a lot of the time with newer board artists, when I give like sorry, portfolio reviews or whatever, it's just like, break it down, break it down. So it's just like, we don't like, there's too many things that change from this picture to the the other. And now I just don't know what to pay attention to. Yes. Uh, Rhythm is something that I've been, uh, Megan has heard me say it probably a million times, like rhythm, rhythm, timing, rhythm, timing, timing, rhythm. (laughs) I've said it a million times. Like, I'm like, because if you talk to me about boarding, I'm like, I don't care about your drawings. (laughs) I don't care what they look like draw stick figures i don't care it has to be clear and it has mm. to be a timing or rhythm to the you know the scene mm. or the sequence like that's the most important thing um and like l- lucky for me like all these things kind of like like i i guess i am self-taught or whatever i don't know but like it's just a lot of these i was given a lot of opportunities in the beginning of my career to like do these things and like learn it instead of like making bad choices for 10 15 20 years and then like having to break those bad you know those bad Mm -hmm. habits or whatever yeah because when i worked at um like my first boarding job was at renegade uh it's a small studio still around in glendale they're awesome and uh they got a show for cartoon network called hi hi puffy amayumi oh Um, i remember that yeah was it? Yeah. Didn't Sam Register make this? He's the head of. Yes, it was, I, believe, I believe it. Uh, yes, I believe it was Sam's he idea. With the head uh, honcho, the yes. man himself. The man himself. <laughs> yes. Everybody listening to this episode now is gonna like look at Sam Register on LinkedIn <laughs> and try to add him. <laughs> oh, sorry, Sam. <laughs> sorry, Sam. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So like the Renegade, like uh, Daryl, Daryl Van Sears, who owns uh, uh, Renegade and runs it. Um, who's like a pretty famous uh, big deal uh, Disney animator. Um, he just like, hey, because I, I, the story, the long story is, I might as well just tell it all. I went in there because <laughs> it was going to be like, I had just ended my first job in LA, which was doing flash animation, which was at Comedy Central. Mm-hmm. And some of the people I worked were like, hey, there's this new show starting up, up at Renegade. Um, they, they're going to be flash animators. It's all going to be um, in, in-house. 
Um, and this is at the same time when Foster's uh, Home for Imaginary Friends was starting up. Mm-hmm. So it was like it was like Puffy and Foster's were like the two flash shows. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went to Renegade with my portfolio in hand, and I was like, I do flash animation. Had my reel on CD-ROM. Oh my and, god! Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe it was a DVD. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> uh and then, floppy disc and then yeah, yeah floppy was on floppy yeah uh, it was on cassette tape um so, oh my god <laughs> let's just keep going down um so laser disc yeah so i interviewed with daryl and he was like um so why why do you want to do flash animation <laughs> i'm like i don't know it's just i'm an animator this is what the, the work i've been finding out here he's like yeah but you can draw and he's like looking at my portfolio you know and I'm like, okay. And he's like, why don't you just do boards? And I'm like, I've never done boards. I don't even know what that is. What? So he gave me like a page of the script and said, why don't you do this and come back like in a couple of days? Mm-hmm. So I went home and I had no idea what I was doing. And I boarded out like, I think it was like a page or two of like an episode of Puffy. Um, show it to him. And he's like, yeah, you're hired. I'm like, oh, okay, what? great. Dang. Yeah, what? And I had no idea what I was doing. And on top of that, they were like, oh, board artists are also going to direct. Wow. I'm like, yeah, oh. like, I'm like, what, what? <laughs> New job and a promotion. This. I don't know how to do any of this. Yeah. Um, so, so, uh, yeah, the board artists were going to direct their own episodes with the in-house um, Flash animation crew, um, which also happened to be mostly made up of the people I was just sitting next to at my last job. <laughs> so, like, oh my all, God. Of sudden, all of a sudden, I'm their boss. Yeah. Not, not awkward at all. Um, <laughs> Did you like the power? Oh yes, the power. The power yes, um, I'm not that person. I was like scared. I'm like, what? But you just kind of go along with it, you know. Um, luckily, like there was amazing people there that were cool, and yeah. I was just like like a sponge. I could just like just absorb every like I just, just want to learn from everybody. Um, so, uh, um, where was I going again? I I lose my train of thought all the time. What, what was I talking about? Oh, You're storyboarding. Just- yeah, yeah. how you kind of like stumbled into it, I guess, like on that Emmy Poofy show. That's what I'm gonna talk about. Timing. Okay, so, <laughs> so while I was at Renegade, this happens all the time. Get ready. Um, so, uh, so, so while I was at Renegade, um, we were boarding out on paper in the beginning, but then they wanted to transition to digital boards. And at the time, that was like there was no Storyboard Pro. If there was, like, I don't think anyone was using it. Um, they just wanted us to board in Flash and kind of edit our own um animatics too now of course of course that's also like you know a cost saving measure um mm-hmm. uh so because that was the other thing i had to do was cut animatics with an editor and i'm like i've never done this before mm-hmm. um so but for season two i believe they got us like these tablet pcs and they were like can you just um uh yeah board in flash and then time it out sound effects whatever you can you know if you can throw music in there great and I was like, I don't know any, like, how do I, uh, again, how do I do this? Like, I just, <laughs> I just figured out the job and now they're throwing new things at me. Um, oh, but my that, God. but that was like super amazing and important. Like, even mm-hmm. though at the time I was like, oh, I, I already, I don't know, struggling or whatever, trying to get just boarding and directing done. Like now I got to cut my own animatics, but it taught me like the rhythm. It taught me how to yeah. time things. Mm-hmm. And it's like so important for a board artist to learn that. Like, yeah. it's more important than the drawings. Like, I don't care. Again, I don't care about your drawings. <laughs> pretty drawings are great. We all love pretty drawings. Um, but but pretty drawings are going to be boring if the story is boring. <laughs> yeah. If the gags aren't funny, you know. So it really, really taught me, like, how to make sure, like, I'm setting up jokes correctly. I'm not holding on things too long. Or maybe holding on something is – or maybe holding on something too long is funny. You know, like, being able to, like, mess around with it myself – Mm-hmm. um was like really cool and like liberating so yeah from that moment on it, it, i guess it really messed me up <laughs> so i was like all the, all the jobs after that i wasn't directing i just was doing boards again mm-hmm. um and then i was like back on paper but but i took like i took all that um all that stuff i learned from cutting my own animatics to now you know doing my boards and it's helped and mm-hmm. another thing too like when you pitch it's like mm-hmm. you, pitching is another thing it's like super 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 important you know because it's like you're selling your your episode your ideas your gags everything to the whole entire crew um but 
I just realized I'm not drawing anything on this jam board. <laughs> that's because you're. Well, that's because we're making you talk. Yeah, it's because I don't shut about... up. I no, don't shut up. No. I talk forever. I talk. It's all your wisdom. We're on the exactly. second page. <laughs> Join us. Join us on the second I can't page talk and draw if you at the want. Same time. Exactly. <laughs> it's funny Neither because can I. don't I worry. Like <laughs> we have like two types of like personalities that come on the podcast. It's like I can totally do it, and some sometimes they're like, oh, I don't think I can do it. It's like it's fine. You're talking. You're I really to want to. I really want to draw. I really want to draw because drawing is fun. <laughs> if I go back but, to my old episode, I'm like, is, yeah. wow, I didn't draw anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I have to make up for that now. I'm like, look, guys, I can draw. I swear. I just can't draw and talk. <laughs> it's all those times when you're drawing and someone's talking to you. And you're like, are you even listening to me? I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so if I, if I am drawing, I'm really not listening to it. So <laughs> now we that's know. why I can't. Yeah, yeah. I say that out loud. It's okay. It's okay. I think so. I kind of want to go through. Let's do like a quick little rundown of all the the, the productions that you uh, were staffed on. So you were you were storyboarding, directing, doing the animatic uh, um, Renegade. On um, I can never say the name of that. Hi hi, correctly. Puffy Amiyumi. <laughs> hi hi, <laughs> Puffy. Yes, Puffy. Ami. Ami, Yumi. <laughs> Yumi. That's in that order. I'm like, yeah. I know there's Puffy. I know there's Ami. You can call it Puffy. Just call it Puffy. That, that's Puffy. What we, all we all call it the Puffy Show for some reason. On the Puffy Show, yeah. On the Puffy Show, we did this. On the Puffy Show, we did that. Yeah. So the Puffy Show. So, yeah, the puffy show. <laughs> so, so what, can, what other shows did you work on after that? And were you just, were you a um a board artist most of the time? Like, what was kind of like a little bit. Can you kind of like tell us a little bit what the progression looked like? Um, yeah, I was a board artist most of my career. Um, so I feel like I was really in the trenches. So by the time mm -hmm. I got to actually direct, I was like, I felt confident because I never mm -hmm. felt confident. That's just how I am. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so I didn't get to, to direct again from Puffy all the way up until like, what, what was it on Bullwinkle? Um, mm -hmm. Well, I did get hired to direct on Trolls, the Trolls TV show mm -hmm. at DreamWorks. Um, mm -hmm. That didn't last that long. Um I, I did direct on Trolls for a little bit, and then Bullwinkle was starting up uh, right next door, and that was almost like pretty much my the same crew I just worked with on the Peabody and Sherman show. Mm. Um, so I was able to just kind of you know, slide over to that. Um, so I, I kind of consider that like my first, like, uh, well, second technically directing gig. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then from there, um, yeah, but let's see, let's go, oh, let's go back even further. Yeah, so after Puffy... Uh, that was when I went to Nickelodeon to work on this preschool show that did not work out well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I'll save you a lot of stories that I probably can't tell on this podcast, but I got out of there fairly quickly. Um, mm. Yeah, that was a crazy show. Um, that was Nihau, Nihau Kailan, mm. uh, which was starting up. Uh, so from there, I went on to my gym partners and monkey at Cartoon Network. Mm. which is where i met a lot of amazing people like carl ferulo and all these other like super funny people like <laughs> and it was the first like outline uh or board driven show that i've worked on mm. on puffy there were like i think i did like two up two or three maybe episodes i boarded that were from outline just because the writers couldn't finish the scripts in time <laughs> mm. <laughs> <I think. laughs> so they're like can you just like we have a paragraph of what the episode is supposed to be can you just do it i'm like okay sure oh um, my god yeah yeah again like another thing on the on puffy so <laughs> yeah uh, oh. show, i <laughs> they learn how to do everything um <laughs> so uh so yeah on gym partner that was board driven and that was like oh my god like yeah the crew on that show like i remember i think on my first or second day ian was solic was pitching his board i had just gotten there i had no idea what was going on i was like because it was almost like my even though i worked at nick before that i didn't really meet too many people on that at that studio mm -hmm. um so it was a, working at cartoon network was like oh my god like i'm working with all these people i've heard about before um it was like i am mm -hmm. so nervous um i think i'm gonna come, come across as a very nervous person after this podcast <laughs> not really but, but back back in those days um so so yeah even uh, we, we all like went and I and on Puffy we never pitched actually there were no pitches we would just hand out board ins and yeah we, when we were making animatics like we just handed in the animatic it would get approved then we would make it um, but on Gym Partner we did pitches and yeah I, I that pitch Ian's pitch like everyone was like just ah! 
like screaming with laughter, banging tables, punching Dang. walls. Like it was like the like the, the funniest thing. Like ah, and it was. Uh, <laughs> and I don't think Ian will mind, mind me saying this, but there was a lot of humor in there that would definitely be cut out from the show later. Like it was a lot of adult humor, like oh, just no. to, just to get jokes in the room. But yeah. still, like even with even without that stuff, like it was it was really funny and um and yeah, like I walked out there, I was like, is that what I'm supposed to do? Like, what, 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 am, I, am I gonna be pitching? <laughs> like, what? This is so scary. Um. And yeah, the work on a board driven show too, where it's like it's you, like it's your voice, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, but again, like I got lucky. Like the crew was amazing. The Cahills, who were the um, the uh, the creators of the show, like they were amazing. Like they like no, it's cool. Like I remember pitching my rough board to like them and like I don't know, two or three other people. You know, like as you do on a rough board, mm-hmm. um, and they were like, I was like shaking because this is back when there were Ian actually pitched his board digitally, but the rest of us we all pitched like with boards on the wall mm-hmm. with, the, with, with the pointer stick you know Dang. like it's 1940s uh disney or whatever <laughs> and uh and you know so i'm up to like you're just shaking like <sighs> like trying <laughs> trying to get the jokes out and you're sweating and your voice goes out it was mis- miserable um but they were really supportive and like they laughed at things and that was like oh and you get that laugh like the first laughter you get at the pitch or at, at your first pitch like you'll never forget you know it's like yeah. oh the power <laughs> like like having mm-hmm. the power over people yeah to make them laugh yeah so um and that that can like that show had a great schedule where like yeah every week there was a pitch like on mm. I, I think it was friday like every friday was we would pitch the pitch would usually go well, um, and then we would all go out and party. Um, nice. nice. And yeah, Carl Ferullo, Brett Varen, he was another one I was on there. It was like just mm-hmm. amazing people that were on this show. And and uh, yeah, it was just like, everything's like been a, just an like, amazing learning experience for me. That's how I look mm-hmm. at everything. Mm-hmm. Even the shows that like I didn't work out on, <laughs> which are usually preschool shows. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm definitely not getting any preschool jobs after this. Uh, <laughs> even though shows like always learn something. Maybe that's good. Maybe maybe, maybe that's good. You know, yeah. yeah, no, I think it's like it's it's kind of hard. I mean, I say that also for our audience, where it's like, I remember when I was starting out in animation, I was like, oh, I just gotta be the right fit for every kind of show out there. And I think, mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. maybe when you start out, maybe because you really want a job, but the, after a couple of years, it's better to just find your voice and find shows that your voice fits on because then you're just happier you're just a happier person <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah in the beginning it was like and i still kind of feel this way especially now with the industry being a little bit weird <laughs> with, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. so, so with, with no shows um but uh in the beginning i was like i'll do anything like i, I just my personality like i always want to make people happy <laughs> um mm-hmm. so like i just wanted to fit into any like anything and everything as i got more experience then i was like getting typecasted and in a good way because i was like oh mm-hmm. now i'm working on the shows i really want to work on mm-hmm. with with the people mm-hmm. i really want to work on too uh, with too so um yeah so yeah. i think it's interesting because yeah. it's something that like i don't know if you guys felt that but i feel like when i was in school we i feel like we were really worried about being put in a box and being typecasted mm-hmm. and i feel like it's not that bad to be typed. I don't know. There's something to be said about like it, it can be good. You can own it and have fun being like typecasted in a way. I guess like if you're, you know, like because that's your strength, right? Like I mean, yeah. unless you really, I don't know. You're. I say be good at one thing and do that thing really. You know what I mean? Like yeah. yeah. Instead of trying to be good at everything, it's really hard. At least yeah. for me, like that's why I just focused on being the crazy cartoony person. Mm. um and just keep hoping those shows uh exist you know mm-hmm. at least there's one sh- one of those shows <laughs> existing right right at this time so that's true and yeah. i feel like cartoony so, people are always in high demand anyway because it's like it's hard to find those people like on middlemost mm-hmm. we were like where where it's are they? hard and it's kind of deceptively it looks simple from an outside point of view it's like oh you're just drawing these quick little sketchy squash mm-hmm. stretch cartoons it's just cartoons it's like but you don't understand to make this look good to make it like yeah. work you have to like have all this other kind of knowledge you have to kind of understand how animation works and how mm-hmm. that's going to translate into the final like 
Yeah, you have to understand no, you how can your words are going to translate. Mm-hmm. You can always tell, Megan, when someone's trying to be cartoony versus someone who is actually really, like... Because it has to look effortless like, for yes, it to really yes. work. Yeah. And it's hard to explain that. Because sometimes people are like, okay, but can you give me the steps to do that? And it's like, it's kind of hard because it's something you kind of have to intuitively figure out by, like, watching a bunch of cartoony stuff, watching a bunch of different styles, too, to kind of see, like, okay, why is this working? It's not just the expression. It's not just, do a crazy face right now. It's like, yeah, there's so much more to it, unspoken. And I think think V was hitting on it before, too, with, like, people have different um, interpretations of what cartoony is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. like Loud House, like, I'm sorry, but I don't see it as, like, a crazy cartoony show you know like not like like uh, what we did on middlemost where like parker is just like constantly transforming into like Mm. you know crazy crazy ass expressions and stuff loud house they're pretty much always on model they might like yeah they might go eyes wide you know big mouth whatever for a certain scene but like they don't really break that model too much am i right Mm -hmm. or wrong it's really funny because i think it kind of depends on the artist uh it i feel like um and i think i don't know if people will ever do on loud like the audience will ever do for loud house kind of what they did for like flapjack where people analyze and they're like this board artist drew this way yeah, and yeah. i can tell that because definitely if somebody was like really into it they could kind of tell like there's there's like like some board art i mean obviously it's a harmony show so like obviously things are gonna get like a little bit more like flattened yeah. uh through the the rigs but you know you'll have people who are a little bit more like um tight like a little bit more prime time and you'll have people who are going to be like a little bit more cartoony and mm-hmm. sometimes you could bend the characters like i this is where it's so funny this is where like me english being my second language kind of like translated weird sometimes because i was like in the script it was like the bully beats a lincoln and uh like twists them into a pretzel and i literally drew him in the shape of a pretzel <laughs> that's so funny that's though. funny though. yeah it's yeah. really funny and yeah. it's stayed it's in the episode it's in the episode he's in the shape of i mean he still has see his well head. that's cool that's cool they kept it because sometimes yeah. I, w- I would get this all the time where it's like mm-hmm. that's too much that's too cartoony and i'd be like i thought yeah. it was a cartoony show like yeah no, no, you you crossed the line i'm like i didn't <laughs> yeah. know there was a line like, yeah. the cartoony you know, rules and you have to find out the hard way and i in the beginning yeah. i worked on a lot of shows like that um like fanboy was an interesting show because it was set up like a crazy cartoony show but uh, kind of like harmony it was cg mm-hmm. so it was like the rig can only do so much and like yeah. our my boards in particular like i remember just <laughs> drawing like the, the spastic like crazy ass like fanboys <laughs> and they're like we, we can't do this you know oh and no it's like <laughs> but is it wrong you know like you, <laughs> that's when you get like defensive whatever like well yeah do, do you just want me to draw the model sheet and then they're like well, no but then what do you want me to do like it, it puts <laughs> i now as a director like it puts them in a <laughs> put them in a hard place because i always you know, like directors always want to see that funny, crazy stuff, but at the same yeah. time, it's like, how are we going to produce this? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of going all the way to like Camp Coral, which is the last thing I worked on, which was CG mm-hmm. SpongeBob mm-hmm. with crazy drawings. And everyone was always like, just do it. You know? And I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> like, and the team was amazing. Like, they'd be like, we'll figure it out. Now, of course, like, there was time frames and like, you, um, there was a certain allotment of like how many special poses and rigs and stuff we could do. Right. But like, if you drew something completely off the wall crazy, they'll be like, we'll try to do it. We'll do it. You know? <clears throat> That's like, awesome. Oh, That's yeah. so rare in a CG show, too. Yeah. yeah. Usually, you have to be really limited, like your other CG yeah. show experience. Yeah. I mean, this is also going back, like, Fanboy was like 10 years ago. I don't know. Maybe the. I like to think the technology has gotten better, you know, and yeah. easier, yeah. but I think it is still difficult, you know, mm-hmm. especially to make it look good and, you know. It's um, also just like, yeah, like you just, like, it's like assets and stuff. I feel like, I mean, hmm, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, I. I there's so many ways to think about this. It's what's, I don't know. I think that's what's fun about like thinking about the pipeline and shows in general is like, this is a new puzzle. And how can I fit my vision in this puzzle of a pipeline, which is either harmony or CG yeah. or hand drawn? Like, cause it's all like a whole new different set of um, <clears throat> constraints. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's really it's really interesting. Yeah, talk, thinking about you know what you know what I I've that's happened to me a bunch of times too. Where like I was on the show and they were like, "It's too broad," and I was like, "Oh, come <laughs> on. there goes the fun." Yep, I got that <laughs> all the time, all the time. <laughs> so. Uh, I kind of wear like a badge of honor now. You yeah. Know? Like, at the time, it was frightening, yeah. you know. And it's like you're really young, and you're, you're like, do I fit in or not? You know, should I care? Should I not care? Like, again, like I just want to make people happy, and I just want to do what I want to do too. At the same time, <laughs> it's a, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of emotions. Uh, mm-hmm. so but eventually, yeah, I got very fortunate that I did get typecasted, and I did keep finding like cartoony shows to work on. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's go back, uh, way back, way back. Um, <laughs> so let's see. After gym partner, what did I do? Um, is that one? There, there are some like jobs in between that I didn't fit in, and I was like, okay. <laughs> There's like like the in between jobs I would call them. Like I worked on Robot Chicken for like a couple months. Mm. That's cool though. That's, that it is really, cool. It was very cool. It was very interesting. Um, because you know it's Robot Chicken, it's stop motion. Um, they set up this whole new studio in Burbank. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, like right next to the recycling center. Uh, yeah, I've been there once. It's crazy. There's yeah, like it's a awesome. trailer in there. Yeah, the whole little state like, campground. Uh huh. <laughs> Wait, uh, in they... the recycling center? Like they're like they're no, like... no, no. It's next door. It's next no, door no, no, to the recycling center. No, 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 no. In the studio. In the studio. <laughs> <laughs> they're making cartoons and recycled plastic. <laughs> yeah. Think about Ver- the earth. Yeah. Very, very. Yeah. They're all about the environment. That place. Um, <laughs> no, they have like they were setting all this up. They had just got that building when. When I started there, um, and yeah, they have like these uh, fake like well, no, they're actually real. They're real camping trailers mm-hmm. that are inside. They got inside because they're, they're like these buildings are like sound stages that mm. they got, yeah, um, with like offices inside too. Um, and yeah, they have all the sound stages set up for the animation. It was very cool. Um, but for me, like someone that has for that at that point, I have been working for I don't know uh, eight eight years. I don't know. I had like had some experience. I kind of knew how things were supposed to go, and that show was like, okay, you're doing boards. Like, here's a here's a script. Do this skit, go. And it's like there was no schedule. There's no nothing. They just wanted stuff rapid fire. Oh um, my yeah, god, it was crazy. Um, at, at the same time, it was like working with like amazing people, celebrities coming through. Like it was awesome, what? you know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you know, all the all set screens, you know, pals and stuff, you know, the voice talent, everything. Um, everyone was super friendly, super cool. Like learned to, you know, got to hang out with stop motion animators. Like what job do you get to do that on? You know? Right. Um, yeah. But from there I went to Teen Titans Go. I was going to say, I feel yeah. like you, you would fit on Teen Titans like Go. Like I feel like Teen Titans Go is like one of the only shows right now on the air that has this like cartoony style, like Teen Titans and mm-hmm. Gumball. Yeah, and that's a good show to bring up as like a show that mm-hmm. did not care how broad I went. Like oh, I went like gosh. crazy on that show. <laughs> yeah, because there was like, like I knew a lot of the crew from like the producer, my friend Peggy, Peggy Regan. Like she was from Renegade, um, so like I knew a whole bunch of people on on that show, and uh, and Pete, who's running it right now, like mm-hmm. Pete McHale. Like so, yeah, like. Um, coming onto that show, there, there wasn't really any like do's or don'ts. <laughs> so I, I kind of just, I kind of just went full craziness, and they were like, "Great." <laughs> I, I have no idea if anybody else was doing that. It, it was also like a weird like schedule too, where we split up eleven minutes into three with three board artists, mm-hmm. which was like, like you get this chunk, you get that chunk, you get this chunk, like what what? <laughs> like I didn't really have a connection to the episode I was working on because you just got chunks of it. It's almost oh. like working on a feature, you know. Yeah, yeah you... but for TV, it was strange because up until that point, I always had my own episode, right? You know, right? Yeah. But here, you were like, okay, an eleven minute episode, and you just get like the first, like I don't know, three pages, and we were boarding in Flash. Which... I was going to ask you, like, were you excited about getting back into Flash or not no. at all? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and they knew that. I was very open and honest. I was like, I'm slow. I'm not good at drawing in flash anymore because i had the <laughs> i had the sweet life of just like boarding on like i don't know like i use like photoshop or whatever i think on fanboy or just boarding on paper like it was so much easier for me um because for me like i just want to be fast like speed mm. speed speed like when, mm. I'm, yeah. when i'm when i'm boarding i don't want to get bogged down with like technical stuff you know um 
that's why I hated boarding in Photoshop. And when I was at features, I was boarding like, I'm sure you, maybe you use this view like flicks, you know, and Photoshop. Uh, and all that stuff. <laughs> like, no. Every every day I'd be like, can we get Storyboard Pro? Can we get Storyboard Pro? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I hated yeah, it yeah. so much. I'm like, I had like this <laughs> list of like hotkeys of like, I'm like, like it's almost like I'm coding or something. Like, what am I doing? Like, oh my God, I just want to draw. I just want to draw. Um, so yeah, going back to Flash, it, it was definitely like a, I, I, yeah, we were building our own animatics again, and you had like the, the whole like Warner Brothers sound effect library. I'm sure it's just like um, Thundercats. Uh-huh. Um, yep. But but at that time, like, like we didn't really get too much direction on what music we couldn't use. Like, mm. like I'm just gonna put like you know like heavy yeah. metal in there. See if any, eventually they'll you know they they find the songs they like and mm. they just keep choosing the, those over and over again. But in when I was there, like first season, it was yeah. It was, I don't know, like, oh shoot, you were on season one. That's crazy. Yeah, I was there from the very beginning. Yeah. Wow, what so, insane. And then That's... I came back for season two for the very beginning of season two, and then I left again. Mm. Wait, did I work on that? I don't remember. I think I worked on the whole. Yeah, I worked on all of season one. I did. Mm. Yeah, that must have been fun though. I mean, besides the like getting back into Flash and hating it, and then being like, <laughs> were you in love with oh, Flash, Flash again by the end? No, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. I think Flash is an amazing tool that you know people have like uh, uh, have like transformed it into an animation program because it's yeah. not supposed to be one. You know, it's no. yeah. it's, it's for not. making websites in in, in nineteen ninety nine. You know, yeah. and for s- somehow some <laughs> the geniuses that we are, we have somehow made it for animation. Um, but like, and the animation on Titans look great, you know. And I would say okay. most Flash animation nowadays, like, it looks good, you know. Mm-hmm. Everyone's figured out the the tips and tricks, and I think Titans is only like the only, maybe the only show that's still going in Flash. Yeah, um, I could see God, that. you might be right. Yeah, it's funny because I feel like every time I meet someone who's been on a production where they had to use Flash as a storyboard um, okay. program. And I think Bojack was in Flash, the storyboards. Um, Bojack Horseman. Every time that they go into Storyboard Pro, they're like, oh, but Storyboard Pro can't do all these things that Flash can do. And I'm like, Flash sucks! Stop! No! No! <laughs> Storyboard Pro's got a camera. I can move a camera. I don't have to animate stuff. Yeah, it's great. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I love how every time you open up Flash, it just resets. Like every time, at least back then it did. Like oh, I gotta choose my brush again. Choose this. Like in the, like I think nowadays, now it's probably a lot better. I don't know. I think they've actually it's gone. Made it for... Didn't it turn to animate or something? Yeah, now, like... now it's yeah, yeah, now, it, yeah. now it's animate. But... Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Flash. It's probably also one of those things. that's like. You know, something that if you grew up with it and like this is like your comfort, like you know how it works. Yeah. Like I don't need to work anything else because it's, it's kind of how I became a Sturber Pro. It was like yeah. I love this program and I never want to leave. And now I was like, oh, I should learn harmony. Oh, it's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the yeah. same. Like Sturber Pro, for, I'm Sturber Pro forever. Storyboard Pro for life. I even draw my comic in Sturber oh, really? Pro. It's <laughs> yeah. like. I don't know. It's just what it is. Yeah, Storyboard Pro, I mean, it can be pretty buggy sometimes, but I'll take the bugginess over anything like Photoshop and Flicks and, yeah, or Flash, yeah. Man, I um, haven't boarded in anything besides Storyboard Pro, except for Photoshop during, like, college and for, like, a storyboard test. I did Photoshop. <laughs> so like dang slow. <laughs> the only other thing I would board in is traditional like i actually like that'd be fun i actually like drawing on little post-it notes like you know the like tiny ones that are like i had to do that once actually i take that back i did have to draw on post-it notes but the thing with that now is that it was so inefficient because we would board on post-it notes and somehow the boards on the post-it notes were super clean and tight you spend all this time doing it traditional scan it in trace it over in server pro i'm like man i could have just done this <laughs> uh, I've been done two weeks earlier. Why are we? Some things like that. It's like I get the aesthetic of like wanting to do the old school way, but sometimes change is nice and yeah. efficient. And I like to go home at a reasonable time <laughs> and not draw on post its all night long. <laughs> I think it's good for thumbnails as well. I'll say I think for like a beat board. Yeah, I feel like if you're doing a beat board, traditional is kind of nice. I don't know. 
Howie, yeah. what do you think? What's your like, well, what's your process? Because I draw like on paper first. Mm. Like when I'm like thumbnailing, like I draw like. I, usually I do like, do yeah. that too. My crappy first pass like is always bake. on a notebook page or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's like super, but it's like stick figures. So you- oh, yeah. oh yeah, it's this the is worst like drawings. Yeah, just for me. Because yeah. I found, I tried to do my crappy first pass in Server Pro. And I always fall into the habit of, like, yes. making it too clean, especially because, like, if you're in, like, a board schedule, whenever you start a new episode, you usually just came off the clean week of your mm-hmm. last one. So yeah. your brain is still in, like, cleanup mode, and you're like, oh, God, everything is, like, too on model, and, like, you get, like, art blocked, and you're just stuck there, like, what is <laughs> good? I hate that. I oh, yeah. Just do your <clears throat> shitty first pass and Sharpies and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, we used to like pitch on a Friday and then you get a new episode on Monday and I'd be like, my brain is shot. I yeah. Can't. Uh... I'm <laughs> and that's when I do nothing for the whole first week. <laughs> like, uh, I, do oh, sorry. I, I mean that's research week. Sorry, that's research week. <laughs> um, it's valuable. Uh, yeah. Honestly though, I find I always work better if I take off a couple of days just to like soak it in. Because sometimes you do need to soak the board and you have to read the script. You have to like kind of think about things that would work for the episode. You yeah. want to do a good job. Yeah. You gotta like think about all that yes. stuff. You can't just yeah. go in. Then no, you, you can't. Exactly. Because yeah. then you start just repeating yourself too. If you just go in and just start boarding, you just start doing the same couple shots, the same couple things, and then you're just gonna yeah. end up boarding the same episode for like twenty mm. episodes. No, totally. Like whenever uh, we can all discuss process. Yay. Um, Yay. Yeah, because like when I would get my script or or um, outline, whatever, I wouldn't draw anything. Like purposely, like even if I wanted to draw, I wouldn't draw. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want it to build up in my head until I'm about to explode, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so usually, yeah. And I'm tired. Like I'm tired from just pitching like my last board on Friday, you know? So yep. it's like, so the first week really is just processing. If there's any like thing I'm curious about, like maybe there's something in this episode I need to research. Like I'll like, okay, I'll Google it, whatever. Okay. That's how that yeah. works. Okay. Um, but I'll, and I'll board out like almost in my head, you know, mm-hmm. and then let's say then a week goes by and then Monday I'll sit down and like, and then it's always like this, everything just comes out, you know, mm-hmm. it's, I, otherwise I, I can't just, I, I can't like just be it out of me, you know, like it has to come out naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially if like, it's, if it's a board driven show, like a lot of time is spent just staring at the wall, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. walking around in circles, <laughs> um, yep. uh, yeah, staring out in at, at, at clouds. <laughs> uh, how do I make this joke work? How do I make this joke work? But yeah, I but I work on uh, always on paper in the beginning. Like just get a big sheet of like Xerox paper. Um, yeah, and just I, I actually start writing. If it's an outline shot, I'll start writing everything out. Actually, like mm-hmm. I won't even draw first. I'll just maybe dang thumb- really. So you start yeah, the writing part. Maybe some thumbnails here and there, but like I'll start writing it. Um, and it'll be really sloppy and really, really gross. Um, do you write like but, in, but I can follow it. <laughs> do you write like in prose or do you write like in bullet points? Like kind of how would you describe the way you write? I ask because I I find it extremely hard for me to write in, in like prose with like in full sentence uh, with like adverbs and fucking I'm just usually when I beat out my... Uh, comics pages i'm just like character does this and then yeah that's a good question yes yeah. it's always bullet points <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's always dash blah 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 dash blah 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 yeah because mm-hmm. i mean at least that's for in, in uh, you know an 11 minute episode or just like because really i'm just writing out the outline in the mm-hmm. beginning you know mm-hmm. and then when i start thumbnailing then i'll fill in like the dialogue and then i'll kind of get it working you know and everything so um yeah a lot of writing the stuff down is just so i don't forget it too (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. i'll write down ideas that that this might not work but i'm still gonna write it down um yeah and then when i'm ready then i'll start thumbnailing on paper Mm -hmm. um and then and then i'll start how big are your thumbnails yeah are we talking like centimeter or like big chunky (sighs) thumbnails no, they're pretty small. They're, they're probably okay. like an inch, inch by nice. inch, you know. Nice. Yeah, and they're super sloppy. They're stick figures. Um, nice, but I can, nice. I can understand it. <laughs> that's all. That's that all that matters. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I'll go into Storyboard Pro, and that's when everything changes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I throw. What was I doing? Like, what is this? <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense. Or I'll think of like a better idea. Hopefully, like, yeah. oh, I got a better idea. Okay, let me thumbnail this out. Okay, cool. I'll put this in there. So, like, Storyboard Pro is kind of the cleanup. Mm-hmm. it's almost like the the it's like the boarding slash cleanup phase because i got to the point where 
and this might be out of sheer laziness, that like I don't really do a cleanup pass. You know what I mean? Like it's almost like that first pass. <laughs> I try to keep that as my final pass too. You I know? Do that too. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think I think I, it's the computer's fault. It's because it's so easy to draw on the computer. You know, mm-hmm. and to kind of like mm-hmm. fake that clean drawing. You know? Yeah, but uh, also you draw similar to me where we draw very loose and we draw. I don't know. Yes, I want to say confidently. Yeah. I don't know if that's yeah. the right term, though, because we are like the lines. We don't kind of noodle and like sketch and kind of like labor. That is the a lines. very good point. Yes, yeah. I draw very loose, but it's still very clear. I think exactly. You too, so you people too, Megan. think yeah, they so. see our stuff and they're like, "Oh, you must have spent a long time on that." I'm like, "Dude, that is like one second. I just like <laughs> you learn to draw clean like that, and yeah. you get so far as a board artist because it's just really yeah. quick." Yeah, I think yeah. that takes years of experience too. Like, mm-hmm. it seems like every maybe this when I was doing boards only like every job I got, like seems like a part of my process, like got streamlined, <laughs> you know? So yeah. I was, I was getting faster and quicker, um, uh, at, at writing and everything. Yes. <laughs> now, I, now I just snap my fingers and a storyboard appears. <laughs> He's I a wish. machine. He presses I the wish. button and it comes out. You've gone out. too far, Howie. I, I wish. Howie's now AI. It's so much work. It's still so much work to get a storyboard out. <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah. I have a friend who said, like, why can't, like, why can't we just, like, do it in a day? Like, why can't we just do, like, an 11-minute episode in a day? I'm like, you're crazy. Like, it just doesn't, it like, he was, he was serious. He was episode. serious. Like, he's like, I do, really? like, already 100 panels a day. Like, maybe I can, I'm like, no, you can't do that. Yeah, it would suck. Yeah. Suck. You'd also try. burn out. Like, who wants to do like that? In one day for an 11-minute, you, you could get a decent beat board maybe it has to be beat boards like one yeah. shot per page and then then start filling in the blanks yeah but even yeah. so it's not going to be enough for someone else to understand what to do yeah, yeah. exactly it's maybe for yeah. something because on thundercats we had how many days like three okay, days yeah. to so we got the out. handout on like yeah. a monday and then like on a friday we did like the rough pitch right yeah, because it was no. it was earlier. We had like three days. I, I remember it was. It was like days. three full work days to like rough out your whole half, which is like six to seven minutes. Yeah, so it was just like action and comedy. <laughs> but it but it was just a beat board, so you you mm-hmm. had like I think I would come in with like maybe sixty drawings. So, mm-hmm. so it's like it's like twenty drawings a day. It was a lot either way, especially if you it had like is, a heavy episode. It's still a lot because you're thinking about like everything and you're mm-hmm. basically pitching it mm-hmm. with the beadboards just to kind of see if the episode makes any sense at all. So that's kinda, yeah, it's not. And they were good yeah. for certain things. They really like they're OK with like, for example, like a montage or like a battle that didn't really matter for story. I would just write like there's a montage here. It will be three beats or this will be five beats. It's like, OK, mm-hmm. cool, because. Really, sometimes like monta- like certain like things like that doesn't really matter what specifically is happening as long mm-hmm. as like you start somewhere and you end somewhere. Like as long as that's there, you can kind of mix things around a bit. Yeah. Usually, um, depends on the show. <laughs> there's there's times when I'm thumbnailing where I'm just like I don't want to think about this right now. Montage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Circle montage. and then just come back to it later. Yeah. I secretly love montages. I know they're like the bane of everyone's existence. I kind of do too. Yes. Yeah. Okay, because. Yeah. Because like okay, you have to be on a cartoony show number one if you want to do like a really fun montage. But you can kind of just do whatever, and it's all about like you were saying earlier, like that flow and that rhythm. As yes. long as things are flowing from one shot to the next, you can go crazy with it. And for me, I always was never stressed out about like battle scenes or montages because I'm just like okay, as long as everything is flowing in the right direction, that's all I need. I just need to know how the shot will end and begin, and I'll be fine. I can kind of do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, f- I feel like it's a very common trope in 11 man cartoons <laughs> um, yeah. the montage i feel like we didn't do a lot of them on middle most right mm, we had Did some we? songs but i feel like montages songs, sure. we had some but yeah they were like classic montages yeah yeah mm. so i worked on some shows where oh my god it's every like, <laughs> two montages if we yeah, had like, montages they yeah. had a purpose it wasn't like yeah oh god the writer doesn't know what to do throw in a montage that'll fill some space exactly it was always a thing yeah (laughs) it was always like a device yeah yeah um time is going by and pictures are there (laughs) things are happening yeah so i have a couple questions for you howie like um i want to talk a little bit about 
supervise and directing because you've talked a little bit about directing but i want to i want to know kind of from your experience what does a supervising director um do like what's mm -hmm. if it's not a day-to-day -day, what's like a week to week what's kind of what 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 is the job what does the job entail in terms of like obviously you're going to be looking at boards but you're also looking at designs you're looking at so many moving parts so i kind of want you to kind of like give us a little bit of like a rundown of what that job is and yeah where on... it starts and where it ends kind of yeah millmost was my first um uh supervising director job um so the job kept changing as we mm -hmm. went through production so i was fortunate enough to start like at the very very beginning um mm -hmm. so for the for the very like before we hired like storyboard artists before we hired like pretty much the whole crew um i was there with the show creator um john travick and my job in the beginning was to kind of help him like set the style of the show like of course mm -hmm. john he knows what he wants he's you know he's got a super clear vision but um when it came to boarding like that was on me to make sure like mm -hmm. the boarding style matches what john wants and what i want too um mm -hmm. uh which was the great thing about for, for me working on that show was that like it matched my sensibility so well. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, in the beginning was making style guides. I made a board, like a how to storyboard style guide, like for Millimost. Um, there was hirings, you know, we had to hire people to work on the show. So we have to mm -hmm. interview stuff like that. Um, Tell us about what it's like <laughs> interviewing people. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's interesting. I mean, as someone who has been interviewed, you know, you kind of yeah. know, like, yeah. I mean, our line producer Phil Phil Harris was awesome at like small talk. Shout out <laughs> right, to right, 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 Megan. Like he yeah. was just like he was just really good. Like he, um, I like to say Phil cares about everyone because that's mm. the way he acted during it. It's like, true. So what are you doing? What? Oh, oh, you started rollerblading. Like oh, that's cool. Like mm. you know, like, like he could latch on to any conversation and start talking about something. Um, uh, yeah, but interviewing people. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. Like. And then to talk to like John and and um, you know, and Phil afterwards, and be like, "Yeah, well, how about that guy?" You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, were they a fit or not? Yeah. So, what's gonna like? I want to kind of like get your take on like in an interview. Kind of what are you look? You personally, just your opinion. What are you looking for? What makes you? What makes you think after an interview like, oh, I I like that candidate. You know, like I I enjoyed talking to them. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. Like, one is, like, the style of the show, and that's, like, not a knock on anyone. Like, everyone has their own different styles and their own sensibilities. Like, you just might not gel. Like, mm -hmm. I think a lot of times maybe you're looking for someone that's going to, you know, you just get along with, you know, that you can mm -hmm. kind of just, like, mm -hmm. talk to, like a friend, you know? I think uh, going back into supervising, we're talking about supervising directing, like, communication is something i was always like talking to people about like we got to communicate we got to communicate we need to tell everyone about everything and like so i got to make sure like this person seems like they're open and honest and they will tell me everything mm -hmm. um and yeah make sure that there's just they're right for the show which you some sometimes you just don't know in, in an inter a five ten minute long whatever mm -hmm. interview you know um you know sometimes mistakes get made it happens <laughs> uh yeah but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah, you just try to find at least for me, try to find someone that gels with you like right away. Maybe even it sounds stupid, but like even the same interest. I know that has nothing to do with the job, but like mm -hmm. again, it sounds like I'm just interviewing someone to be my friend. But uh <laughs> no, <we're okay. laughs> I think I think that's really you guys, interesting. Can you guys to be my friend. <laughs> no. It's really interesting to hear because I, I feel like you know, for an audience who's like listening, I'm like we haven't really talked about interviews and for you someone who's been interviewing i think these are kind of interesting things to hear for people who are like listening yeah it's true yeah it is, you're you we, i mean you are kind of looking for a bunch of buddies to make a show right it's like cartoons yeah. are making cartoons is fun yes at the end mm -hmm. of the day it is a job which is something i would say all the time too i think where it's yeah. like you know because at times it's super stressful and i'm like Okay, we got to remember we're making cartoons here, which is something you hear everybody say, right? But mm -hmm. like, um, but yeah, for potential candidates, like we always we, we tell them, always try to be open and honest. Like, here's the schedule, here's the show, here's what we're doing. Do you think you're a good fit? You know, if mm -hmm. to me, it's like if we're, if we're interviewing them, then their foot is already like halfway in the door. You know, like mm -hmm. like there was something like their port, their, their boards or their whatever. You know, their samples, their Instagram, whatever, look cool enough that will. That will want to interview them. 
Um, so yeah, it, it really comes down to an interview is like more of, I think an animation, like a personality thing. Mm-hmm. I remember like when I was interviewing everywhere, you know, back in the day, it seemed like I already had the job. Maybe it's me just being <laughs> super cocky, um, <laughs> but like, it seemed like you would get the email or call, or whatever from the line producer, like, Oh yeah. So the EP, the show runners, they love your work, blah, blah, blah. Just come in for an interview. We just want to meet you. And I always felt like, all right, it seems like they already knew who I am. You know, mm-hmm. they saw my boards. Um, they just want to make sure I'm a living human, you know, breathing human being. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? So you go in there and yeah, it is like a personality thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and they'll sh- and on Millimost, we made sure that like we would tell the person the schedule. Like, is this cool with you? Mm-hmm. Um, like this, these can we have three teams? We have three directors. Blah blah blah. So, because a lot of times you find out people will be like, I never worked in a, you know, on a show like that, and you're like, okay, <laughs> yeah, mm. can, can you work on a show like that? You know, or they might be like, well, I don't like that, um, mm. that kind of format. It's true. Or, yeah, that pipeline. Mm. So, they might have their own uh, way of doing things, which is totally cool. Whatever. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. So, yeah, there's a lot of different things. And like I said, like interviewing, I think people, yeah, you try to get it all right. Um, but really, the, the truth is that like, <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of, it's like a relationship almost. It's like, <laughs> it's very different when you get into it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the first couple of dates are cool. And then, yeah. And then when you start working with the person, you know, it's like, oh, I didn't realize he did that. Oh, huh. huh. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so you try to find out as much information as you can. Yeah. Just be open and honest, which is something I always try to say to everybody on, mm-hmm. the, on the crew. Um, mm. So, yeah. Nice. No, I love yeah. that. No, thanks for, but, like, kind of spending some time to kind of talk about that. I think it's really interesting because it's something yeah. that we haven't really talked about on the podcast before. So. Um, yeah. And like I said, John and Phil were really good at interviewing. Um and Dave too, Dave Johnson, the other EP mm-hmm. on, on Millmost. They're all much more, um, I don't know, articulate than I am. <laughs> so mm-hmm. uh, they're very good at like the small talk and all, all that stuff. So um, They also had like, they knew exactly what they want, which really helps when your yeah. leadership knows exactly what you want. If we can talk about Millmost <laughs> for a second. Yes, yeah, that show, I mean, shout out to Millmost. <laughs> um, yeah, we all just stepped in it because like, yeah, the John and Dave like totally knew what they wanted. Um, mm-hmm. I've worked on actually worked on a lot of first season shows. I don't know why, but that's just for for a while. Um, that was just happening to me, and I can say it was not easy. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, there not only are there are personality clashes and things like that. There's the executives. You know, there's um mm-hmm. the studio all of a sudden not liking the show that they bought. Um, mm-hmm. You know, everyone changing, you know, gears on things, scripts being thrown out, episodes that were boarded being thrown out. Uh, you know, it's super demotivating. And fighting. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's crazy what goes on, on on a first season show. And as a board artist back then, I was just like, you're not really filled in on like things like that, you know, yeah. so you kind of see like, your job. hey, what happened to so-and-so? Oh, they got fired. <laughs> you know, like, oh, what? Yeah. You know, your boss, your your EP or whoever just got fired. Like that happened to me several times, you know, oh several God. shows. That, yeah, like. Um, I wasn't the one that got them fired, Megan. It wasn't uh, me. Uh, um, <laughs> but, but no, it's true. A lot of leadership sometimes just kind of expect you to read their minds. Or they'll do this thing that I hate. To, I hate this as a critique where it's like, I'll know it when I see it. That means mm-hmm. nothing to me. I can't give you anything with that. Or like, just make it funny. Because that's awesome. Yeah, like, just make it so funny. subjective. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the hell you want. Funny could mean something yeah. totally different to me. Yeah. And then we're just sitting there going around in circles when it's like, man, just... Tell me what you want. I'm totally okay with just being is, told. <laughs> nobody knows what they want, Megan. Yeah. It's it's Hollywood. Like I know we yeah. work in animation and it, it seems like it's not Hollywood most of but it is. Yeah. But the thing yeah. is like everybody has their own ideas of what the show should be. Mm-hmm. including the show creator you know mm-hmm. um, who sometimes the execs don't want to listen to oh, you know God. <laughs> um you know the execs they have their own agendas and everything. Um mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, it gets very, very tricky there in the beginning. Um, but on Milmos, we, if that, if that was happening, we were definitely shielded from it, uh, yeah. because the execs were always really cool from the beginning. Um, I would say, I don't think any episodes got thrown out. Nope. Um, some would there, get like notes, but like, that's yeah, expected. Like... And we always found ways to make it work too. And that was the thing. Mm-hmm. The creators also, John Dave always knew like if there was like big notes, they were always like, 
with us with it. They'll, they'll check in at meetings. They're like, oh, okay, this one had a lot of notes, so we'll, like, we'll come to, like, you know, the first animatic meeting that we don't really go to just to, like, see, like, how it's going or, like, just give us an update and we'll give you some feedback. It was never just, like, you were left off to figure out the mess. Mm-hmm. No, they always, like, gave us an incredible amount of freedom. Mm-hmm. And at, at, at the same time, they were like, this is what the show is. And, like, you mm-hmm. can't ask for anything else, like, on a first season show because everybody is ready to go off in different directions, you know? Yep. And, um, and just to point out, this show was done entirely in the pandemic. None of us yes, ever met each other. Yes. That sucked. <laughs> yeah. Fun story. I interviewed um because i was working at uh dreamworks features at the time and mm-hmm. i got the call from john who because i worked on the millmost pilot um mm-hmm. some some backstory here wow um yeah wow worked on the millmost pilot wow um, <laughs> and then the thing actually got greenlit i was like no way <laughs> um and john asked me what you know c- come on in for an interview and that was like the week before everything got shut down so mm-hmm. I went to Nickelodeon. Everyone's like, I think there's a pandemic going on. What's happening? Everyone's like high-fiving each other, hugging each other. Everything's oh. fine. Everything's fine. Woohoo! Yeah, part. Yeah. <laughs> and next week, shut it all down. <laughs> and then, yeah, I was at, still at DreamWorks. I think I got the job like a week, li- the job on Milmos like a week later. Um, so yeah, I think that was first week of lockdown, maybe I got the job on Milmos. And then... Mm. Or maybe second week, whatever. I was definitely working at home, and then I'm like, I have to tell DreamWorks I'm quitting. Uh-oh. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so I messaged the line. Um, it seems silly, like now, but at the time, it was so like nobody knew what to do. You know? Yeah. It's like, am I gonna be home? Like, maybe I could just wait a week, you know, and mm. tell them, right? And just use the excuse of like, yeah, you know, lockdown, whatever. Because we all thought we'd be working back in the studio in like a week or two, right? Like, I nobody, that. nobody so knew anything. Weeks. Don't yeah, take yeah, your stuff, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Leave your plans to die. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I messaged my um, story, uh, the head of the story department, whatever, and like, yeah, got, got on a Zoom call with her. I was like, I'm quitting. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, it's like this. Surprise! Like, I don't know. Yeah, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> and she was very cool about it. Um, but yeah, we made the whole show during pandemic. Um mm-hmm yeah pat ourselves on the back but to answer the rest of your question v because you asked me about what does a supervisor yeah do, um i don't want to get off track here too much um yeah so in the beginning it was definitely like locking down the style for the board artists mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. john was taking care of like the designs and stuff with uh the art director mm-hmm. uh and that was kind of like his thing and he left me like for the you know alone with the story department um so when board R started coming on um you know my role started changing because then we were <clears throat> we were getting you know there was pitches happening giving notes i would say john dave Mo- i left it to john and dave to give notes i don't like i've seen this before <laughs> as a board artist and just someone who's worked on a lot of shows where there's too mm-hmm. many there's too many cooks in the kitchen and i didn't want to be like mm-hmm. another voice giving notes and mm-hmm. i didn't know john and dave too well either like this is the first time kind of you know working with them like i said i was on the pilot but i didn't really work with you know it just that was just a freelance thing um so yeah. i don't want to be like hey i got some notes okay do this net mm-hmm. like like just coming in too hot and john and dave the eps are like who is this guy <laughs> like, <laughs> like who who can, can you shut up yeah because i look everyone has their place you know it's it's there it's definitely their show and like megan and you, you know you were saying like they're so clear like i didn't want to start giving notes so they'd be like no don't do that you know so Mm-hmm. I, I was always pretty quiet during a pitch, and I would do this thing where I would do drawings during a pitch, pretty much, where I would just hold up post-its. Remember, Megan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, draw this, draw this, draw this. You know, like, here's a gag, here's a gag. I would just give stupid mm-hmm. gags um, and let John and Dave do, like, the story stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then when Animatic started, started getting getting built, then it was, like, full steam ahead. <laughs> it was crazy. That's when the craziness began, because we had three directors that had two board artists each. Mm-hmm. and each and each team also had a revisionist um and they each also had an editor so i was like just ping-ponging back and forth from every director if there was questions on an episode um i didn't deal with the board artists too much it was like just the directors i would deal with the directors mm-hmm. and editors and john and dave and mm-hmm. phil. yeah i had to deal with phil the line producer um yeah luckily directors 
Shout out to Megan. Yay! Megan, Ari, and Keith, uh, who are awesome. Dream team. Dream team. Yeah, because you guys made my life so much easier. <laughs> even Yay. though I was even though I was going crazy with the amount of work and everything, you know, and especially in the beginning there. Uh, yeah, you guys were so super solid. Like, I knew I could just trust you, you know. Um, Which also the- felt nice. It's nice to be trusted because it's like... <laughs> It's scary, too, because it's like, oh, no, this person is trusting me. I better not fuck this up. <laughs> but it's also, like, I'd rather that because it's, like, it gives me ability to actually, like, work and get stuff done. And there's nothing worse than someone constantly checking in on you every hour, like, hey, how's it going? It's like Because I've I have worked with people you. like that. I've mm-hmm. worked with these people. Like, I knew, like, by the time I got on Milmos and I had, like, the confidence to be a supervisor at that point. If I was a supervisor at, at age t- 26, I would, like, you know. I don't know. It would be impossible, but because I had like so much, at least for me, I had so much experience. I knew exactly. Well, it's a, I'll say it, but I knew exactly what to do and what not to do, even though that's not exactly true. Because yeah. you never know really what to do. But uh, but you know what I mean? Like like I knew I I've been on shows where I did not like the show order where I was like that's so weird. Like I would like that's just not what you would do, right? Mm-hmm. And then I worked on other shows with the most amazing showrunner of all time where it's like if I ever become a showrunner that's what I'm going to do, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. it's kind of just building upon like your experiences and I knew like you know, in my mind I might be like a micromanager, but <laughs> but <laughs> but in reality I'm really not. Like no, in, the begin- <laughs> in the beginning oh, thank you. In the beginning I might have been because like I remember like redlining some boards for you, Megan, I think, during animatic, I think, like, maybe, but nothing ever felt, everything just felt normal. No, it was, yeah, it was never, like, I'm gonna reboard this entire episode, just so you know. Also, a lot of times I would (laughs) ask, too, which was also great, it's great, because, like, I was directing on Middlemost, and sometimes when you're in a leadership position, sometimes you just feel, like, completely alone, you're just Mm -hmm. like, well, I've got no support, but Middlemost was great, because we had you, like, we can go to you as, like, that point of contact to be, like, does this work is like, or I'm, I'm having a problem with this. And you're always there to like, you're always available too. It was never like, mm, I'll put Leave it on my alone. schedule. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd be yeah, like, no, t- let's just do a Zoom, Zoom call real fast, which is like yeah. the communication on the most, I think also made it so good. Cause it seems like. Talk to sometimes... my secretary. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's true. Sometimes crews are like, oh, we have to schedule it. Or like, oh, we don't really do Zoom calls. We just do emails. And it's like, how can you ever gauge yeah. what a person's like reaction is? Or like the yeah. tone, like it's really hard. Things fall through the cracks. You just don't. It's hard to get, yeah. get through that stuff. <clears throat> yeah, no, I always, you know, I was pitching communication. Communi- like, tell me, tell me, if anything, like if something comes up in your life, tell me. You don't have to get too personal, but you know what I mean. Like <laughs> if it's gonna, if it's gonna affect the show, let me know because mm-hmm. I, I, I don't want to be blindsided by anything. The worst is like all of a sudden it's like, hey, I'm going on vacation tomorrow. Bye. You know, it's like, wait, what? Like mm-hmm. people do that. <laughs> people do that stuff. You know. Yeah. Or, or, oh, my board artist won't finish uh, this episode. Um, and uh, I don't know, I guess it's going to be later or something, you know, the day before the pitch. Oh it's like, my no, God. like, you no. have to tell me these Just things. Tell so, me. like, yeah. And I think so... it's because people are afraid to, like, mm-hmm. do that stuff. People are afraid to, like, talk about things because they're afraid they're going to be seen as, like, yeah. oh, I'm not doing my job or, oh, I'm, I'm failing. But it's like, no, mm-hmm. people want to know this stuff. Like, that is part of the job, too, is for things not always, You're... they don't always go right. And it's good to be talking about that. Yes. And, you know, like any show there were things on mill most like fires that we had to put out but we like we always like <laughs> plan like there was always more than enough time to plan it you know yep. like okay we can sit down relax think about it you know instead of being like ah, 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 it's all on fire you know mm-hmm. <laughs> running it's around in circles like it's crazy the- how many problems can be solved by just talking like if a board yeah. on a vacation we we're like oh we'll have our floater sarah come in and step in and like the director would it was always no big deal where sometimes I've been on shows where it's like, yeah. you can't go on vacation. What are you yeah. talking about? It's like, yeah. what do you mean I can't go on vacation? It's like, well, nobody's like, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to handle the situation. It's like, it's such, it's such bullshit because everyone has drama in their life, whether you're, uh, you know, or, I don't know, a revisionist or if you're the EP on the show, whatever, yeah. everyone has drama. And yeah, it's like, just be open and honest. Just tell me. It's almost like, like one part therapist really (laughs) it's true though like tell me all your problems um again don't tell me too much um Mm -hmm. but (laughs) but if it's definitely work related and it's gonna affect your job definitely tell me um so yeah megan you were always great about all the directors were great about that um yeah so i mean that way we were able to really if there was ever something coming up that was going to be a problem we were able to get on top of it right away before it became a bigger problem and then screw Mm -hmm. up the whole production you know 
I think yeah. it's also really interesting what you mentioned, Howie, about like how you don't know if you could have been a supervising director at 26. I think there's something to be said there in terms of like, I kind of want to just bring up the idea of like that rat race that we kind of can get stuck into sometimes as artists. It's like, I got to, you know, like uh, the 21 under 21 or like, I don't know. I'm making up numbers now. Yes. You know, like, I mean, like, I'm a revisionist, yeah. but I want to be a director now. Why am yeah. I a director? And it's yeah. like, yeah. but you need these And it's space. like. I know. I know. That was a thing, a very big thing a couple of years ago mm -hmm. where a lot of, a lot of, a lot of kids, I don't know myself sound old um, but a lot, a lot of new board artists were like i want to be directors and i'm like that's great like you fine if you want to be a director that's cool but like i really do think you should get the experience first and that's not a crazy thing to ask like i don't know that's what mm -mm. that's how it went down for me mm -hmm. um, but a lot of that was me and my like like my self-confidence you know mm -hmm. um, like i'm not ready yet. i'm not ready yet. i'm not ready yet um mm -hmm. but but yeah and like for for board artists that are in their 20s you know i'm I'm telling you this now. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> everyone always likes being told what to do. Um, no, but like being a board artist is the most awesome job on the show. Like I'll still say that as someone who has done like, you know, almost everything on a show, like being a board artist, you have the most control. Like everyone's looking to you to make the funny episodes or whatever. It's, you know? Yeah, it's true. It's, actually. Yeah, you yeah, get yeah, to yeah. do all the drawing. When mm -hmm. you're a director, when you're a supervising director, you don't do that many drawings. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Mid yeah. On Middlemost, I got lucky and um john and phil made sure that directors and me got to draw mm -hmm. um but yep. I've, I've worked with directors just directors not even supervising directors but just directors who were like i wish i could draw again mm -hmm. you know <laughs> it's like if they're drawing they're just going over drawings like a revisionist you know um yeah. mm -hmm. so being a board artist is the best job on the show um that's my maybe my personal opinion, but I do think it's true, and <laughs> and my personal opinion is always true. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. So and it's like just relax. Like you will get there. Like you will become a director. You know, if you keep doing it and you get better and better, you board on a couple shows, a couple like different types of shows. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and get that experience, but it'll make your life so much easier too. That when you do get that supervising job, you're not like, "Oh crap, what do I do?" <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, sure, you can always wing it. You can always fake it. I've done it. I faked it. <laughs> that was a, the whole beginning of this interview was me uh, talking about how I faked it at like Renegade and stuff. You know, mm -hmm. just being thrown into it. Sure, but um, but it's like I never had those aspirations though. Like I didn't want to climb the ladder. Mm. You know, I wasn't like I want to be a director tomorrow. I want to be like no. Those things happened to me, and I just went along with it. That's a little bit different, but mm. um, but yeah, everyone just relax. Being a board <laughs> artist is awesome. Yeah, and you will get to be a director, and you will get to supervise, and you'll get to boss me around and Megan around, and, yeah. and please be, around, be nice. You know? <laughs> yeah, please be, please be nice. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, That's so funny. That's like, I don't know. I, I, I like to kind of highlight that sometimes in interviews because I feel like I myself kind of fell in that trap as a younger artist where I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm 21 and Rebecca Sugar got her show at 25. What am I, I doing know, I know, if I don't have I know, a show know. at 25? We've all been there. Old, know. You know, yep. right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just kind of nice to be like, hey, like, um, is it okay for me to ask how old you were when you were um, supervising director? Yeah, uh, when did, well, I'm 40, how old am I? 44 now. Uh, so when, when did Millimol start? Three years ago? Oh so yeah, God. I was like yeah. 40, 40, 40, 41, 42, which is like 41. I think that's like 41. Yeah, that's so 41. Yeah. that's yeah. really, I don't know. I just kind of want to put 19. it out there to be like, hey, that's kind of, that's like, that's like a, a, a more normal path in animation. Mm -hmm. That's a, a, a path that is, what you can expect more like at, at 40 being like a surprising director that makes more that it's like more you got that experience and stuff you yeah did your time you, you got all like the different kind of shows you know like what things work and don't work and i feel like that's yeah i don't know it's more valuable also like people are more willing to like yeah hear you out and trust you because you've been through it all that is a very <laughs> very very good point and that, that was something i always thought about i'm glad you brought that up because like if i was a 26 year old supervising director bossing around a mm -hmm. you know a 45 year old uh person and be like ah, this feels weird and that has happened actually like i mm -hmm. you know it does happen it, it is inevitable but i think if you're a little bit older yeah you definitely get respected more um 
But yeah, all I gotta say is like you'll get there. Like you don't have to like fight. You know, look, definitely pitch. Try to get your own shows. Don't don't mm-hmm. stop. You know, right, right. Because you learn as but, you pitch, right? Have, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't mean like just accept your fate. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just be quiet. Be a board. Stay artist. where no, you are. <laughs> like, do whatever you want to do. But I'm just saying, like, yeah, life will be a lot easier if. If uh, you get the experience first and then kind of, you know, just work chill out. Yeah, enjoy yeah, chill things out. and don't grind because no Being one cares about that either. Awesome. Yeah. Like <laughs> at the end of the day, people are just going to see the end result and they're not going to give crap if like you pulled an all-nighter for it or if you just worked your eight hours. Why mm-hmm. well, you worked less? Because you know how to work efficiently. People are just like, did you do the job? Then yeah. You did the job yeah. and then yeah. you're, you can be happy. You can go home and have dinner on time. Yes. Like, those play things video are more games. Important. Yeah, yes. you can play Skyrim your like cat. for nine hours yeah. straight. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, but I, I, I just, I just kind of wanted to put a pin in it, just because mm-hmm. it's like, I, I know it's a very competitive industry. We all kind of feel, I don't know. There's a lot of people who feel like, wow, I'm not where I sh- should be right now. And so I think mm-hmm. it's, it's nice to hear like, hey, like, you know, this is, um, this is kind of what you, you can expect out of a career. But I mean, those um, thoughts are normal too. Like, mm-hmm. you know. It's, it's, Sure. Sometimes I think like, man, I wish I, you know, had my own show. I wish I didn't mm-hmm. do. Yeah, it's easy to dwell in the past, mm-hmm. and I find it doesn't do you any good at the end of the day. Nope. You know, because then you get depressed, and then you get disappointed in yourself, and you know. So I try not to, yeah, dwell in the past and just keep looking forward, and because you never know. Like tomorrow, you might get a call to be a supervising director, or you might get a call to, you know, mm-hmm. the show yep. you're on might call you into the office, into the you know line producer's office, uh, producer's office, and be like, hey, guess what? There's now a director's opening. Like you never know when things are gonna happen either, and mm-hmm. things just happen. Yeah. Especially things just happen. <laughs> things, seriously, yeah. So, um, I, uh, wanted, you were talking about pitching shows. I wanted to ask you, have you pitched, have you pitched shows? Do you, is this something that you think about or, um, yeah, I, I have in the past. I've obviously never sold anything. Um, <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't, wouldn't be here right now. No! Like, Whoa. My giant, <laughs> my giant castle filled with money. Um, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, God. I pitch things. I haven't pitched things in a long time. I'm working on something right now with a friend of mine, which is cool, um, because I have a little bit of downtime right now, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, nice, not nice, um, (laughs) because I still got to pay them bills. But um, yeah, so like working on a project with my friend, um, which is cool. Um, And yeah, I'm, I'm really bad with like focusing. Um, Mm. (laughs) Like, like I have like all these random ideas and then I'm like, I'll be like for two days, I'll be like, this is awesome. This is the best idea ever. Oh my god, I can't believe I thought of this. Yeah, it's awesome. And then wake up the next morning. What am I doing? Mm-hmm. This doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Or I spend too much time on it, where I just mm-hmm. like I don't know. It's almost like I I bore myself with it or something, or I just mm-hmm. work myself out of it. I like, turn myself off to it, okay. where I'm like I, I just get I always forget like a pitch. I don't and maybe I'm wrong here, but I really do think a pitch. Sh- and please people don't listen to me because i never sold anything but like you shouldn't put too <laughs> you shouldn't put too much too much information in the pitch mm-hmm. and my problem is, is that i want to put too much information like i'm trying mm-hmm. to build the entire world mm-hmm. like okay. to get every single character's um you know motivation and personality like 100 percent correct and, mm-hmm. and i'm like now i realize like i don't think you need to do any of that <laughs> like, yeah. like, like just, just make like a like a, a a catchy like a quirky idea whatever be really good at selling it you know or trying to sell it um yep. you know and uh yeah i don't know i i always put too much effort into it and it takes me years to develop anything and it's yeah it's stupid don't be like me <laughs> so <laughs> i was um i was gonna ask you that's an interesting question that we got in um instagram dms you can dm creative block uh <laughs> listener um but um we had someone ask us uh um how is it like pitching without rep do you have rep uh howie is it okay no, if you ask? like an, yeah. like an agent or anything no, yeah I do not y- yeah that's so... something i always think about getting and i have not no how I've did you get your opportunities pitching to kind of like answer that person yeah so at the time i would do pitches like it's usually for the studio i was working at mm-hmm. like when i was working at disney it's probably like 10 12 years ago uh, they, they had like a shorts program going so i was pitching to them all the time and they actually did pick up some stuff mm. it didn't i it always got killed at like the the final boss or whatever <laughs> yeah. um, but uh <laughs> but yeah i don't know and then i have like friends that'd be like oh i have a friend in development pitch to them mm-hmm. so 
I feel like nowadays, though, with like there being so many studios, like there's Netflix and Amazon and Apple, but like the oldest, you know, the streamers now, it's like I don't know a lot of people at those places. Mm. Um, but back when it was just like Cartoon Network, Disney, um, Nickelodeon, and Warner's, really, you know, so yeah. it was it was a much simpler time. So like mm. everyone, you kind of knew like an exec to like hit up and be like, hey, can mm. I pitch to you, or who do I pitch to? Yeah. Mm. I think it is probably better to have rep, maybe, or an agent. I don't know what your your opinion is, um, Megan and V, because, I don't know, it feels like you'll get your foot into more doors. So, I do think it's important for certain studios, because there's the whole, like, no unsolicited ideas, yeah. which is true, because it's like, oh. you have to kind of, like, you know, it's like all that legal crap, people have been protecting themselves, but... It's also, like, the kind of thing where, like, if you're at a studio already, it's a lot easier to pitch to that studio once you're there. Yeah. Because then you can just, like, walk over. Yeah, like, DreamWorks was the last place I pitched to, um, DreamWorks TV, and that was, geez, I don't know, four, five years ago, maybe? Mm. And, yeah, I just knew the execs from, you know, working there, Mm. and here's what I always get when I pitch something. (laughs) They always, they go, and... Trust me, this is not me patting myself on the back thinking I'm cool or whatever. <laughs> but they but they always go like, this is a great idea. And we don't know who it's for. <laughs> and I'd be, like, uh... I'd be like, but it's funny, right? Like, but it's interesting. Like, but they don't care. Like, they're always looking for like, who, you know, who's going to watch the thing, which I get, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But for me, like, I'm always making shows for myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, I'm yeah. not I'm yeah. not the person going like. Okay, let's see. We need a show out. There's no shows with robots right now. I'm gonna do a show for a robot for girls ages four to eight. Uh, well, like I, I, I don't think like that. I just think of a stupid idea and then I put it together and then I pitch it. Um, <laughs> and it's always like borderline. Like, is this for kids or adults? Like, I don't, <laughs> and like I, I'm like I really don't have an answer for that. I'm like it's for everybody, you know. And I feel like those lines are getting blurred a little bit nowadays. But mm-hmm. but back then, like it was definitely like. You're either pitching for kids or you're pitching for like a prime ugly primetime adult animation. Mm. <laughs> I just called I just called all primetime animation ugly. Damn. Uh-oh. Don't cut that. how you go down. Don't cut that. Yeah. Don't cut Don't that. Cut that. Don't, cut <laughs> that. Don't cut that. You heard it first on Creative that. Block, everyone. Don't cut that. Um. <laughs> I take it back, I take it back, oh god, I take it back, I take it back. <laughs> it's oh. all beautiful. It's all beautiful. <laughs> yes. That's so funny. No, it's great. It's great to hear. I think it's just like it's it's I do think like the takeaway is like you kind of do have to work in the industry for a little bit. Like if if you want to pitch without rep, um, you out there, uh, you have to work in the industry for a little bit so you can meet the people. And if you work in a mm-hmm. studio, uh, if you don't end up meeting the development people there, you can probably get in touch with like artist man and management or like find some people that you can ask. But yeah. definitely I, I feel like it's kind of hard to pitch without um without rep without working in the industry oh yeah yeah. Yeah. if you're not in the industry at all then i have no idea how you would yeah you'd have to have an agent yeah to pitch Mm -hmm. um have you ever thought about i'll ask you guys questions um you ever thought about pitching a live action or anything because that's something i always thought about too and that i think you need an agent for oh 100 percent. yeah they won't even like yeah they won't even look at you yeah our lowly animation you draw with your hands i feel like yeah live action i don't know i i feel like you you kind of need to be a writer for live action yeah to be like mm-hmm. I, I typed this whole thing look there's all these words and yeah either that or you need to like make your own like live action short or something Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. Like win some awards at a festival and win um, awards. Oh, that sounds like a lot of work. Which is crazy because it is funny yeah. how like the reverse there isn't that problem where people like we got a live action like we got a comedy writer that has this you know special and now they're making an animated show and it's like you have no experience in animation but yeah I'm okay it's weird how you can like, jump from that side <laughs> yeah. but our yeah. us going over there is like. Yeah, Ten times I think it's harder. absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never. You? And it, the, the thing is, it's the opposite. You know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, we would totally get it. And there's been so many successful live action directors that either they have worked in animation or they have like an animation like sensibility. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, like the ones so. that like storyboard their like films and stuff. It's like, yeah, it's all the same principles. We're all yeah, doing yeah, the same stuff. Like any stuff. Wes Anderson movie or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, it feels like yeah. So it's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, I, that's that's really great. I think um I think this might be time for some questions Ooh. from our listeners. From our patron KT, what was one of your favorite gags you put into a cartoon? Yeah, so I was working on this show and I was boarding uh-huh. and the show had writers. The head writer of the show thought that he was way better than everybody else <laughs> um he had quite the ego Uh-oh. uh and he let everyone know it he let everybody know it um and he would put these jokes in they were like bad puns bad lo- whatever they were like stupid like they, he put he would put bad dialogue in the scripts oh. and one day i just got tired of it so i had this <laughs> i had the i had the character say the line and then the character looks at the camera and goes like this. Thumbs down. <laughs> you basically, and, um, for people, yeah. um, because we don't have the camera on, how we did a thumbs down. So the character I did a looks thumbs at, down. Yeah, looks at the camera, does a thumbs down. Thumbs down. The character was not supposed to do that. That was not in the script. It was supposed to be just a joke like any other joke in the script. Um, but I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> and, and and everybody got it. Um, ah. and then after and then afterwards. Like, you know, it's one of those things where, like, did, did some people definitely got it, some people maybe didn't get it. But afterwards, like, I think a couple of days later, that writer who had that huge ego came up to me and was he asked me, he was like, by the way, was that like a nod to like the joke? Because that was a funny joke. You weren't like, <gasps> I'm like, no, no, that, no, I wasn't doing that. No, I wasn't doing that. <laughs> I totally squirmed my way out of that one. Um, Wait, did it but, stay in the episode? No. Did it's it get- totally in there. It's totally in there. Yeah. <laughs> It's totally and like people think it's super funny too. Like, okay, because one of the things about this gag is like I never like thought anything of it. Like I didn't. I was just doing it because I was just mad in the moment or whatever. But for yeah. some reason, like like friends of mine, like they'll still bring it up. Like I can't believe you did it. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it's just something I thought was I was just angry at the time. Um, <laughs> I love because you, you kind of started the episode saying like, oh, I'm this very like. I'm this very shy person. I don't want to. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you're just like, fuck well, this guy. You arm me with a pencil or whatever, and I'll, I'll fight back, I guess. But <laughs> We have a couple of Instagram questions, which I'm really excited about. Um, thanks for checking out Creative Block on Instagram, y'all. That's really cool. From K Silva Animation. I wonder who this is. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> 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 the joke here for whoever listens is that Keith was um, on Middle Most Coast. Um, what is your approach to making a storyboard style guide for a show? And what uh, makes for a successful show pipeline? So it's- uh, oh, Keith, you already know the answers to this. Why are you asking me? <laughs> he just wants yeah. to brag about Middle Most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, a question from Keith, who was, yes, one of the uh, awesome directors on Middle Most Post. Um, storyboard style guide. So um for me it's like the first storyboard style guide i saw i think was for i think it was like how to storyboard the simpsons way which that's I think, the classic one yeah, yeah. Which, which brad i think brad bird did yep mm-hmm. and at the time it was like what like i had no idea like like there was so many concepts in there i had no idea like it's almost like my that was like my like the way i learned how to like i don't know like, like read a movie or whatever you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, like, when I worked on Foster's, uh, sorry, not Foster's, um, Wander Over Yonder, I did some freelance boards, and they had an awesome um, storyboard style guide on there that was written by Dave Thomas, I think Craig McCracken, um, and, well, I'm sure he had something to do with it, it was his show, and uh, <laughs> and, that, and that, that, that storyboard style guide was very cool and very specific to the show and look that they wanted. It wasn't okay. so much like... Um, this is the right way to storyboard you know it was like the way they wanted their shots laid out um and it was very direct and very cool um so when i approached the middlemost one it was kind of a combination of the simpsons guide and and the and the wander guide Mm -hmm. um because like i for a storyboard style guy for a show like we we hired you right we hired you to be a board artist like mm-hmm. it's kind of insulting if you're like, here's a guide on how to board, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like like the so, 180 rule. Remember yeah, yeah. That? Here's the 180 rule, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I I didn't want to do that. Like this just seems like condescending. So I wanted to make a guide like the Foster's guide. Um. So, 
Yeah, I saw that guy that um, we had it, the Foster's guy we were given. Sorry, not the Foster's guy, Wander Over Yonder. I keep so saying Foster's. It's, it's a different one that you guys got, right? Because um, I remember when I took the test for Loud House, we were given the Foster guide. Yeah, there is a Foster's one too. Yeah, as, I'm sure there as, is. As, yeah, Craig shows yeah. are super, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. designy. Yeah. We, we can, uh, yeah, we'll probably put in the description of the, the this video if, if you guys are like listening. And definitely uh listeners look up the bradbird storyboard the simpsons way it's really yeah. easy to find it's it's a really good guide also it's for another yeah. type of <clears throat> style of show but it's totally also... i was gonna say that yeah, yeah the, Sim the simpsons guide is because i think and i don't know like i didn't obviously didn't work at the simpsons at the time but like i think like bradbury came in and was like i need to clean how yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. i need to show these people what to do and so the board uh simpsons guide it, the simpsons board guide is like very dynamic like mm -hmm. it's how to make shots very dynamic mm -hmm. which isn't really what we do in you know ch tv cheap tv comedies um yeah in animation but like but still like it taught me like how to like oh that's what a shot could you know what i mean like mm -hmm. like an upshot a down shot what is that like why do you do that mm -hmm. how the camera tells the story things like that how to combine shots i still remember you know right um mm -hmm. And then the Wander Guide, like, it had, like, the whole guide of, like, the visual guy of the show and then, like, references, pulling it in from, like, the things that Craig wanted to reference um, from old comics or whatever. Or, um, what was the other? I'm forgetting the other references he had in there. Uh, but it was all super clear. So when I hit the middlemost one, I, I didn't want to be condescending. I didn't want to be like, this is how you storyboard. I wanted to say, I wanted to kind of have like a visual language for the show and again mm -hmm. it's like the things we were talking about before where it's like clarity um you know uh, yeah. how to board for you know boarding for comedy like keeping it simple you know cutting out the shoe leather um uh yeah cutting around the boring parts um so so yeah i think my favorite it's... thing from that guide is that i still remember is you included a bunch of the um oh my god my what are they called the little like dioramas from the the Viewmasters? Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. As, yeah, like, good composition. And it's true because it's, like, they're so simple and they're so effective and you know, like, there's a whole little story in this tiny little square, which is literally what we do with storyboarding. I loved the compositions <laughs> of those as examples. Yeah, for those who don't know, there's, like, this, these Viewmasters. I want to say they're from the 60s, maybe? Mm -hmm. And, like, they're Hanna-Barbera. A lot of them are Hanna-Barbera. Warner Brothers, um, like, Bugs Bunny. Um... And I think there's also Peanuts ones. Mm -hmm. And yeah, some point, some amazing person out there like made these like 3D sculpts of all these characters and they're super appealing. And, you know, this is back before CG. They look like CG models almost. Like if you were going to do CG, like yeah, that's what I Yeah, because they like kind of yeah. painted them to have like yeah, textures yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're on like, you know, see, like, um, on like, uh, you know, three-dimensional backgrounds, like sets and everything. And and uh yeah they're beautiful and you know you look at them in the viewmaster and and then they have like the you know the depth perception to them too and like but the staging of of each panel or scene or whatever you want to call it of each slide um mm -hmm. is super clear it's almost like a like, like like a storyboard artist drew it you know like it's it's just so clear and awesome um so yeah, I don't know. It stuck out to me when I was making the middlemost guide. I was like, I'm gonna put this in there. Clear staging <laughs> because like really they're telling is only like. Some of them might have like a uh, like a might be one whole story per reel, but you know some of them just had like they were really trying to just tell a story in one of those images, and yeah, mm -hmm. just like a one a one panel comic or whatever, and yeah, it was really awesome. It inspiring. That's very yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, Does that answer that. your question, we Keith? What what else was it? <laughs> there was something else, right? Wasn't there? It was something like else? A, what makes for a successful show pipeline. A show yeah. pipeline oh now we're getting into the real entertaining yeah. <laughs> awesome hilarious stuff um i like to again pat myself on the back uh because i think the pipeline at millimost like you know when you, when you become like or when you when you finally like become in charge of something you're like okay now it's my chance yeah. i'm yeah. gonna make the yeah. pipeline that i always wanted to make and like i said before like i've been on shows that like had like totally whacked pipelines and totally good pipeline so i just took again from experience um what i knew worked you know i knew board artists they like five to six weeks um to do a board uh <clears throat> if it's an outline show the more time the better uh mm -hmm. just because you have to write and do all this extra work um 
and yeah i like i like the the unit style where there's like three directors three directing units um you know in milmos it was three directors they each had two board artists and each had a revisionist and each had an editor and i like that pipeline um mm -hmm. and uh yeah i'm not sure if there's any other no it's really cool it's really cool to see like yeah. how you thought of making up the teams and that's how you envision the pipelines is kind of like this is the, the the teams the team setup and it sounds like you're because you come from boards you have a little bit more of like a, a board yes um, yes like i was in the, like I, yeah like i said before i was in the trenches for years uh -huh. <laughs> so i knew and i don't take credit for everything like you know phil um coming from spongebob like he had his own kind of pipeline and phil mm -hmm. um and lauren lauren gutier who was the production manager um like they were very receptive to everything i had to say Mm -hmm. um and i would say it was very hands-on in the beginning too like to the point where i was like i think i need to step away because mm. um it's just too much like megan you remember i was like here's how you have to like label your board like the the colors and the i and still the, have uh, that bookmark the panels too. the howie storyboard yeah. guide <laughs> yeah it was, it was something i learned from from the trolls tv show um they used to color code their panels mm. and at first i i thought it was kind of insane but at the but on bullwinkle like because i was went from trolls to bullwinkle and then i bullwinkle we had no system whatsoever <laughs> and it made me crazy mm -hmm. and then i was like okay on milmos let me use the system from trolls and they color code everything from like um to what's a revision mm -hmm. um what was some of the other ones megan to like what was um like uh yeah to, so it was blue yeah. when the revisionist well it was red when we had a revision and then we sent it to the yes. revisionist and they when turned it off, blue yeah. when they gave it back to us so then we knew mm -hmm. what was being touched Mm -hmm. I think green was like good, like Approved. don't touch it. Yeah. Fine. Orange was like, which we ended up not really using orange towards the end. Scratch. But orange used to be like, yeah, scratch. But then the pipeline didn't really need that aspect. Yeah. Uh, purple, purple was, was cut. Yeah. Which yeah, also we would leave I liked. everything in the board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we left it in there for a while, which was good because sometimes you go back and you're like, yeah. oh, actually, let's put that back in. It's like, oh, it's right there. We don't have to go, okay, hold on. Yes. I have to close out and find a new version or like oh crap i like saved over that version we lost all that old stuff yeah so. when i went on the camp coral it was kind of like every man for himself mm. on that <laughs> show so i was like yeah i just i just stuck with the middlemost um kind of yeah storyboard pipeline mm. yeah color coding and everything and it works really well <laughs> so mm. it saves you as a director so is it um, um was it a system that you guys were using going back and forth from edit uh or is it was yeah. it just prior to edit you hope that the editor is opening up the storyboard profile i think they do it depends yeah, on the yeah. Sh like yeah like because mm. like when i was at dreamworks we would just hand the storyboard profile to the editor and they would just take the track panels and put that right in but at nick like in you know, on milmos the production people wanted to do that mm. they were like we want to give the track panels to the editor i'm like okay if you really want to <laughs> like, you mm. know, i'm just trying to streamline things and if the editor is cool with it you know doesn't take that long um mm -hmm. yeah, it's so it's really interesting so, yeah. how the track panel is like because that was something that we were doing on captain fall like uh, that was a team from bojack horseman and the way they were doing it was like um we were matching the animatic in the boards with the timing but also we were working with with the scratch a lot we were mm. doing a lot of a. Uh, so it's a little bit it's really interesting how every single show has a different pipeline from boards mm -hmm. to going into animatic. It's crazy, isn't yeah. it? It's like how long how long have we been doing this for? I know. Hundreds of yeah. years. And only... hundreds of years. And still. <laughs> and only... still every time it's like, I don't know, I don't know how, like how many weeks should the board artists have? Like really? Like what <laughs> Yeah. And then like it's important too to like because when they didn't get to animatic it's a whole other pipeline you know mm -hmm. and like we made sure that like we didn't start designing stuff until the animatic was locked you know mm. which was something like <laughs> on bowling code we didn't have like there were times where we'd be break de breaking down an episode and i'd be like uh i think we might cut this we might not like you know like oh, like there was yeah. no animatic yet you know so like yeah so as soon as the board is done get that get that thing right in animatic mm. get it approved as fast as you can you know, I think we had the mill most we had like, I think a week between each time we got to show it to the to the EPs. Right, Megan? Well, like a week each. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And on Milmos too, like, so Megan would get the animatic. 
Um, you would have like a week with it, maybe, before I even. I think no. about a week and a half. So I would get the board, and then I would do my little pass, like okay, yeah, you like, had a pass on it. Do it, fix the changes, clean it up, and then I would like do notes and give it to my revisionist Jackie, and then she would do the notes, give it back, and then we'd have it all ready for animatic. Then it gets sent to the editor, and then I would do like a quick pass, I guess. Yeah. With you? No, wait. We Did would we would you? sit together. No, we, sit we would together. sit That's together. Right. Yep. As soon as the editor put it together, we would then watch, we would review like, it together. Heat, yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, he or she would send us like the first pass. It was usually like the rough version of the mm -hmm. animatic. Some of the dialogue might be in there. Some of it might not be. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, then we all watch it together, and then but the but John and Dave, the EPs were not in there. It was just like it was just me mm. being the boss, and uh, yeah, because some of the stuff they don't need to everyone. see, yeah. like even so, an episode is super long, but it's like oh, there's a lot of like fat we can cut out. Like they don't need to seemed, see all that stuff. It seemed risky in the beginning to not have the EPs there at all, but yeah. they were trusting, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and there were times I'd be like, man, do this joke, and Keith got a lot of this actually, where I'd be like, here's a funny joke, and and they would. They, they, he would do it, or you would do it, whatever, and then like John Davis would be like, "What? What? What is this? <laughs> what, cut, cut that! You what win that some, you lose yeah. some." Yeah, exactly. And that's just yeah. That's that's the game. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But so we had like a week between I think each animatic. Like I would give you notes, like I would give the directors notes. Yep. You would have a week to do it. We watch it again. We we and then after the second pass, then we would show it to John and Dave. Um, and then I think we had two more passes with them. Yep, and then by by the end of this of the series, we kind of like some episodes like became different, <laughs> you know, where like there's some episodes where we showed it to John and Dave early, yeah, because you know maybe it was too short or maybe it was just like this is pretty good. Let's just show it to them right now. Like we have nothing else to do on That's this. That's true. There was a couple um, that they were like, no, yeah. I think this is done. We showed them. They were like, looks good. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That was by the end, though. That was like yeah, when we that's all, figured, we all it out. figured it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was not in the beginning. Ah, yeah. the good days. Uh, <laughs> yes. Right before your show's canceled. I know. <laughs> that's <laughs> just when we figured it all out. <gasps> what? I can say that, right? It was canceled. Wait, yeah. can I say that? It no, was it wasn't canceled. Not picked up. It's on. It's on. Yeah, permanent hiatus. Air quote. <laughs> it's a different, quotes, different yeah. terminology, y'all. It'll be back one day, kids. Keep keep waiting. It'll be on Paramount Plus soon. Check oh, it out. Oh yeah. What day is that? Give, uh, a, give a plug. I think the twenty sixth. Probably <sighs> it'll be before this episode airs. So check is it, it just out. Season... Paramount Plus. <laughs> yeah. Just season one. It... Just season one. Okay, cool. Look at all our hard oh, cool. pandemic work. <laughs> we were sick the whole time we were working on that Look what we it's not true because i think like no i think like none of us got the corona we until like the good. end wow yeah, until, until the end <laughs> just because like phil and like our team kept us all well fed well supplied we got so many yes. like here's a cheese box I like, hope you're doing okay i'm like oh cheese you say yeah <laughs> the perks of animation yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It helps. <laughs> um, we have a, one last question for you before mm -hmm. we ask you the ultimate creative blog question. But before that, we have a Twitter question from at at Elon Musk. No. Oh, oh, oh no. You, he listens. That would have been funny oh. if Elon asked a question on creative blog. I don't know how I'd feel. I would. I would be <laughs> I both flattered and yeah, no, disgusted. Yeah, well. Oh um, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I think we know exactly how you'd feel. <laughs> I mean, you know. Anyway, yeah. You rock, Howie. Question: Where do you turn for inspiration? Where do I turn for inspiration? Oh man, like inspiration is everywhere. Like nowadays, <laughs> like okay, growing up, like I would say it's changed over the years. Because like yeah, growing up, I was inspired by weird, strange things. Um, well, because <laughs> I, I like I said before in the early part of this of this interview, like I was way into like disney animation and then like mm -hmm. ren stimpy came out and i was like what is this <laughs> you know <laughs> and like i wanted to do like crazy cartoony stuff um so anything i see that's crazy cartoony i'm always inspired by and yeah nowadays with like instagram and youtube oh my god there's like so much good stuff out there um it's a lot not a lot of good stuff either but there's a <laughs> lot of, there's a lot of good stuff um so yeah you never know like just you're just like scrolling through instagram and like whoa who is this um and I would say also like like um, watch a lot of like anime lately, mm. um, and I am not like the end all be all on it. Like I don't know that much, but 
just the whole like everything inspires me about japanese animation like from how they actually get it made mm-hmm. um to like what's on this like yeah to the content to like what they're actually producing like how they got away with this because this would never work in america mm-hmm. um no exec would ever sign off on this um yeah i mean i get inspiration from lots of different things um i think for storyboarding too like just as a story artist like telling stories inspired by just the people i meet the weirdos you see mm-hmm. out in public you know like for a while i got like into photography mm-hmm. and what i liked the most about it was just like yeah just capturing the <laughs> the weird people out there that are on the streets i'm sorry i'm calling you all weird people <laughs> but um but yeah it's just fun. yeah i don't know just yeah you're you're inspired by life it sounds mm-hmm. stupid and cheesy but like that's where a comedy comes from a lot of the time you know mm-hmm. so so yeah inspired by all the people i work with too even the bad ones so i think that's great yeah it doesn't make any sense no um (laughs) it's so deep well keep it because it's deep um no i am i am inspired by all the people i work with too like that is it sounds super cheesy but yeah holy crap there's a lot of talent out there so cheesy is good too i don't know i feel like they're all kind of like sometimes like i can't I can't do this or I can't say that because it w- it's going to be perceived in that way. But sometimes it's just good to be yourself. And to Am I saying things I shouldn't say? Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> I feel like you're just kind of like being too hard on yourself, calling your inspiration cheesy. Ah, well, sometimes I say the same things that other people say. You know, it's like, <laughs> this has been said before a million times and I'm <laughs> saying it again. But it's true. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, some of those things are actually true. You were talking about inspiration. I want to talk about the lack of inspiration, which is maybe creative block. Um, have you ever experienced creative block? And if you have, um, what does it feel like for you? And how do you get over it? You don't mean the podcast, right? You mean like real? <laughs> yeah, the podcast. real one, not the podcast. The I'm one. not the first person to say that. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, a creative block is, yeah, it's... It's you have to realize it's natural. It happens to everybody. Mm-hmm. It can happen. It happens to me. It happens to I don't know Steven Spielberg. You know, it happens to everyone. It doesn't matter who you are, right? Mm-hmm. That always makes me feel better when I know it's <laughs> something. It also happens to somebody else that's way more famous and important than me. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, but but it, it, yeah, you just have to be patient. Like that's the only thing I I do is I just. It's kind of in a way it's good because I like maybe I'm working too hard. Maybe I need to take my eyes off this. Maybe maybe I need to go outside, walk around the walk around the neighborhood or something. You know, like mm-hmm. the way to deal with it's different for everybody. But for me, it's like I just gotta let time pass and just be patient. Like I, I think I've saying this before, where it's time, especially when I'm doing like an outline show or a board driven mm-hmm. show, where I'm just like I need a joke, I need a joke, I need a joke, and I can't force it out of myself. I can't. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it's like. Sometimes I'll leave like an empty spot Mm -hmm. of dialogue, let's say, right before the pitch. I'm like, I'll think of something before the pitch. And then I don't. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, what was that? I got to think of a line. Crap, crap, crap. You know, and sometimes when that happens, when you're up, when you're up against the wall and like, you know, the, the, the clock or the clock is ticking, whatever, like you, (laughs) sometimes you think of the dumbest, funniest stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, that's one way to, I don't know if that's getting over creative block exactly, but, but setting like that kind of like uh deadline for yourself, the like friend of mine was like, I do my funniest work when it's like 3am, you know, it's like, do you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's pretty interesting. Um, no, but, it, but there is like a level of truth to that, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. when you get into the groove, whatever, and you, yeah, it, it's a great feeling, but man, there's so like creative block all the time, but you just gotta realize it just happens to everybody. Mm-hmm. You'll get over it. I don't know. Everyone deals with it differently, so well, that's, yeah. that's why we were, we're asking you. We were asking like yeah. how you do it. I think that's really. Yeah. I, th- I really like that. I do feel like I I do think leaving a spot blank, like like giving your like yourself the grace as an artist, you leave a spot blank to come back to later is so helpful because I. I, for the longest time in my career, I had like a very linear type of thinking. And I was just like, I has to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And, and I, I had a really hard time, like allowing myself to jump around in the board and like thinking of it as something nonlinear. So great advice. Sometimes you 
just skip it. It's true. Come back I love this bird, Howie. I, yeah. I drew a bird. I drew a bird. <laughs> I had to draw something. Yeah. I can't talk and draw at the same time. Oh, How do you good. do it? How do you do it? <laughs> we don't talk. You talk. We, yeah. we make you do that. So that's I just got the chill and doodle. <laughs> that's the secret. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um if you guys are listening on um spotify make sure to check out the youtube video there's some awesome doodles by megan and howie they're i drew i drew like one and a half things (laughs) (laughs) i I feel like i just want to stay on and just keep drawing um (laughs) by myself i guess (laughs) (laughs) deep into the late night just doodling is there another page here no Okay. Um, I'm ready for another page. Let's do another page. <laughs> let's do let's do another page. This time, Howie's time I'm gonna, to shine. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna let you. You can still ask, you know ask me questions, whatever. Of course, and I'm gonna try to draw at the same time. We'll see what happens. I might not answer your question exactly because I, I, can't, I can't do two things at the same time. Final okay. round. This, this, this mm-hmm. is the game round. So everyone, make Lightning sure you round. check out the YouTube video <laughs> because this is where we grill Howie. Um, <laughs> so are you ready? Are you on page seven, ready to draw? Mm-hmm. I'm on page seven. I'm drawing. Go page for it. Se- I'm drawing. I'm drawing. Yeah, he's drawing. He's drawing. I'm um, drawing. question. Oh, whatever. What was the name of your first mentor? My first mentor? Oh, it was Brian. Brian Mitchell, who I was talking about mm-hmm. earlier. Mm-hmm. This is we how we do that. a little summer that animation <laughs> school. You guys are quit. Oh, is this, is this a is this a quiz or <laughs> making sure you you're who you really are? Okay, okay, yeah. My answers change every time. Yeah, could be a problem. Oh no. <laughs> um. Okay. Hey, I'm the only one drawing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This oh, is your okay. page, Howie. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, if you were to get a show made, if you had a blank check to make a show, what would it be? Ah, yeah, that's a, that is a good question. Hard question to answer. <laughs> I don't know. I have I no idea. Please, I have no idea. <laughs> oh, God, keep drawing. Keep, yeah, don't stop answer. drawing. Don't stop drawing. <laughs> you have to... I don't know. I don't know. I okay, don't what about know. theme? Like, if there was a theme you really like for, like, a show? Like, would you do, like, a horror or sci-fi comedy? <sighs> I mean, I, I would love to do, like, sci-fi. I would love to do, like... I don't know. I think it's overdone at this point, but like doing the cheesy like '80s kind of like, you know, nice. um, uh, yeah. I have no idea. For a while, I was into like the cyberpunk stuff, and mm-hmm. then that cyberpunk anime came out, and I was like, I want to do a cyberpunk goofy cartoon, and that's like, wait, but cyberpunk's like everywhere right now, so I don't know. Um, but I love everything. Like I love western. I love you know. You have to kind of look at like what's not out there, maybe mm-hmm. or. Or just a way to put a unique spin on, because everything's been done before. So it's true. It's true. Yeah. <gasps> Who's drawing? Who is this? It's v. I'm stealing <laughs> your page. That's okay, because I yeah, I wasn't drawing. Okay, back to drawing. Back to drawing. Lost thirty points because you lost thirty points. You looked you away. Were... Yeah, you looked back to drawing. What's your favorite back anime right now, Howie? <laughs> favorite anime. Um... Let's see. My wife and I we were watching uh, Bungo Stray Dogs, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were watching Bocce the Rock, which was awesome. That one ended. Um, have you seen any of these? Or I've yeah. been rewatching I'm all of Dragon Ball. Meg. Dragon Ball. You know what? I've never watched Dragon Ball. <gasps> it's really fun. It's, it's really good. It's just mm-hmm. so charming and cute, and it's like this weird fusion of anime and like Looney Tunes, and I love it. Mm-hmm. I can never get into it. I don't know why. How I dare just you? Get in... I know. I just, like, I... Leave the call. <laughs> <laughs> Minus Click. 50 yeah. points for that one. <laughs> you heard it here first, how we never watched Dragon Ball. <laughs> it's true. No, but there's a something to be said that Dragon Ball is very different from Dragon Ball Z. So make sure it's you watch shows. Mm-hmm. Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is really fun. Yeah. There's also this great show, we, you can all laugh at me, there's this anime we've been watching called Buddy Daddies. <laughs> That's like a the funny dumb, name. The dumbest name ever. <laughs> And it looks like a spy, um, spy X family ripoff. I don't know if you've seen that show. Oh popular. yeah, that show's pretty funny. Yeah, it looks like a ripoff of that show, but it's totally not, and it's actually really good. <laughs> and I, I believe it's original too. Like it's not based off of a manga, mm-hmm. like most mm. anime is. Um, so I recommend that show. It's very heartfelt and funny and silly at the same time. Terrible title though. I don't know why <laughs> they call it Buddy Daddies. <laughs> but, I guess you remember it. Yeah, yeah, but. 
it's very good i also love anything by trigger of course mm-hmm, yes. mm-hmm. trigger so yeah the cyberpunk series plus 50 points you're oh, getting yes. them back yes. <laughs> and with that i feel like how we how- made it out alive of our um surprise game show yeah. 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 Look, look how much room i take up on this page too when i'm drawing like you draw have no boot. room to draw you have no room to draw <laughs> no but i think it was great it was, it was so funny i got to like draw like your little like weird character <laughs> i was like i'm gonna That's try great. to draw a howie character that's the end of this creative blog howie thanks for being our guest and sharing your story thanks for having me and yeah. thanks to our listeners. Follow us on Twitter at Creative Block, where we ask for drawing prompts and questions to ask our guests. And huge thanks to our editor, Clemens. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Huge <laughs> thanks to our editor, Clemens, for editing the podcast, and Marco for helping us produce the show. If you love our show, then support us on Patreon. We are working on the Patreon. It is going to be a lot better than it is right now. Uh, right now, what it gets you is an early access to interviews, um, as well as bonus episodes. And the Discord. The Discord is really fun. We have some really awesome patrons um, who share a lot of like amazing art and inspiration. I think it's a really fun, little, cute, tight-knit community. Click the link in the description of this episode. I have been your host, V. And I was Megan. Keep being creative, and we'll see you next week. Bye! Bye!